How are we doing today, people? Happy weekend. Is that Mr. The Mike I see in chat? No way. It must be Christmas. And resource. And... No way, bruh. Neogen says, Leon, I paid a streamer to play Yakuza, and he hated it. What do I do? That's an excellent question, buddy. What does the class think of this one? Let's hear some answers. people hey you yeah you're watching this right now how are you doing how has today treated you it's friday yeah it's friday how's friday been for you do you have any plans for the weekend do tell yo isaac welcome buddy welcome everybody welcome which yakuza game did he play that's a good question actually which game did you make him play I paid him the equivalent of one dollar and he played, but he didn't like. Okay, so which game is it then? Someone says the solution is death. Someone says pay the Yakuza to fresh him up. Ask him what he did wrong. Oh, guys. Yeah, resource. My schedule got fucked up, so here I am. Saturday here. Wait, then you must be in some place in Asia, right? You have to be. Or wait, actually, no, you could be in Australia as well. I guess. No, wait. New Zealand. Yeah, New Zealand or Australia as well. Mm -hmm. Yakuza 4. Don't judge me, but 4 is my favorite. Buddy, who do you think I am? Come on now. Even if you were to tell me your favorite is Yakuza 5. I would be like, chat, give him a pat on the back and tell him he's a legend. Leon, why not do a video talk in, in Arabic for the 100k video? I could do it. People told me to stream like purely in Arabic for like, you know, whatever occasion, just for fun. And I still haven't done that. So maybe we could do that. But my problem is I always feel like whenever someone gives me an idea for 100k, I'm like, yeah, but you guys deserve something more special, you know? Uh, and... I still don't know what that thing is. Yo, Jane... Divium... I was wondering, does Psycho canonically not fight? Uh, no? I'm pretty sure she does, if she's in the fight itself, and yeah. Unfortunately, you don't see, like... a sequence like you see with Sunhi, but still, she does fight. An Arabic video on April Fools. Well, I would have to wait a year for that. That means the streamer didn't like Akiyama. He must be jailed. Spit your shit, my king. <laughs> Splatoon. Hey, Leon. Yes, we're doing more Ace Attorney. Oh, by the way, I just want to say, guys. I know there has been like radio silence for the past. Five days? Right? I think it's five days. And I want to say I'm sorry about that, but... Um, I'm going through some things right now. Um, a resource knows what I'm talking about, but... Uh, those things are mainly just hanging out with friends. Because... Uh, 
it's been a while since we hung out as as much as we used to. So, yeah. Yo, Roxy. Yo, Ruby. Hell yeah. Play the free demo of Islands of Caliph, only in Arabic. I haven't heard of that game, but I think I know what to expect. Leon. Edge. How dare you have a personal life outside of YouTube? I know, right? How dare I? <laughs> How dare I? Like, initially I wanted to say it happened because of some kind of burnout, but also I'm not sure. But also it could be. Just that, you know, I don't want to admit it. Um, so maybe there is a little bit of that. But also, I feel like I said that about Yakuza a month ago, was it? Or two months ago? I don't know, man. I don't know. Imagine having a personal life, right? Couldn't be me. Yeah, me neither. What are you, cringe? Uh, yeah, thank you, Roxy. Well, here's the thing. Okay, guys. Let's be real. Is online communication with your friends still socializing? Now, me, I say yes, it is. But I know people, some people out there might think it's like it's, it doesn't count or whatever. But you're still communicating with a human being, so it's uh, as real as it gets. <laughs> Thank you, Star. Hell yeah, Xander. You have an origin story for this emote. Why is this mini mini Leon yapping? You see, I've seen a bunch of streamers with like an emote of them yapping, and I was like, you know what? That's a that's a cool idea. It's funny. So I cropped that, and now it's an emote. Yo, no patience. Especially six hours worth of communicating. Six hours? Are you sure it's just six hours? <laughs> if you know them in real life, yes. See, it's really interesting seeing all the different perspectives on this. But like, guys, okay, you might think I'm crazy, and maybe I'm crazy, but what if we're talking about a day's worth of communication? You know, give or take. Like, you know, continuous. It, it doesn't stop. That has to be socializing, right? <laughs> it's basically like having a sleepover. Yo, gamer guy. Are you into Final Fantasy? I am... Kinda. I, I tried to finish part 1 of Remake uh, for 7, but I couldn't do it. Hey, Bruno, thank you for that 12 months, buddy. No way, it's been an entire year. I know, right? Time really does fly. Look at you. 12 months on the Devil Leon 7 channel. See, now that's something you can hang on the wall. And whenever you have visitors come over, you'll be like, Oh, look, uh, I'm a 12-month uh, subscriber at the Devil Leon 7 channel. And trust me, if that doesn't riz people up, they're not worth keeping. Yo, penguin. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Yeah, this music does make me crave coffee as well. Rate how hard the Kiwami 1 car chase is. Mm, I mean, I'm assuming you're talking about the legend. Honestly, on PC, it's really easy. Because you can just use the mouse. But if you're talking about controller, you might be spending hours there. <laughs> thank you, Crimson Shadow, for the three months. Thank you, thank you. Is this your first time playing Guess Attorney? No, no, actually. I just kind of want to share the goodness with people who haven't seen it. Um, I think a lot of people here already did see the game, or they played it for themselves. But uh, I did have a few people that told me, Hey, this game looks cool. Do you rec like? Would you recommend I buy it now? And I'm like, yeah, go for it. I think Patience is one of them. Leon, do a stream for 100k where you only drink coffee since you use it a lot. I mean, I drink coffee anyway, like 100k, 99k, 98k, 95k, 90k, 95k, 85k, 80k, doesn't matter. 
As a lifetime mouse user, I don't think using a mouse is easier than the car chase. That's interesting. Because, like, for me, it, it was life-changing. Yeah, this is the third game. What do you think about Shin Megami Tensei? Okay, Shin Megami Tensei fans, uh, don't come after me with your torches and pitchforks, but the only Shin Megami Tensei game I played is the mobile one. I know what you're thinking. Leon! Uh, uh, or something. But, look, they had cool collabs, okay? They had, like, Devil May Cry characters show up. They had Berserk show, uh, show up. Uh, Sonic is in Shin Megami Tensei, because why not? <laughs> so, I tried it out. It was kind of fun, actually. There is a mobile game, yeah. I don't know if it's still up. I think it should be. We reached the new Kiwami 2 meta, comparing it to FNAF 3. What do those two games have in common? Yeah, I think that's zero patience. You can't use the mouse in zero. Green? Wait, what? <laughs> really? Hold on, let me look up FNAF 3. Oh, okay. Uh, I see it. <laughs> okay. You know, we need more green filters in games. They get people talking so much, it's insane. Mm, Gravity Rush. I know the name, but I didn't play it, so I'm not sure. For 100k, do a real-life Japan video. I've had people telling me that a lot. Surprisingly, but I don't know. I want something that's more practical. You love Fallout 3 with a green filter? Nice. Maybe I should play that. I want an Arabic video. We'll have an Arabic stream maybe at some point. The question is, what should I play while doing the Arabic stream? Because I have no idea. I think filters are overhated. <laughs> I... Okay, if we're talking seriously about filters, I get why people might have a problem with them. But also, it's just the filter. Like, it doesn't really take away much from the game for me. Yo, Brendan! Thank you, buddy. Thank you. I really hope uh, life has been kind to you as well. Thank you. By Hollywood logic, Mexico has a constant yellow filter. You mean it doesn't in real life? Make a video with Takaya for the 100k? Kidnap him if you need to- Yeah, see, th thank you for providing the solution. I'll make sure to do that now. Only if it affects game performance should it be hated in an objective manner. Yeah, but imagine... Imagine, you know, expecting everybody to think objectively, right? Because it's the internet. <laughs> oh, you don't hate the game because of the filter? Fuck you. Okay, what do you guys say? We start gaming. People say Trials and Tribulations, or Ace Attorney 3, is the best game in the franchise. Like, top, top, top tier. Now, is that true? Or is that Cap? Let's find out. Thank you, Fabio Costa, for the Dragon tier, buddy. Thank you, thank you. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. They say this game has Ichiban. I guess we'll see about that. Uh... Okay. Banger alert! A 
Okay, how's the volume mix? Are we okay? Is the game on the same level as me, or is it louder? Or how are we doing? I swear when it's the start of summer, at least one of your videos will blow up. I hope so. Ace Attorney, Fortnite collab, One Piece, can't wait. Same. It's perfect. Okay. Okay. New game! Alright, welcome people! Uh, we're playing Ace Attorney, Trials and Tribulations, the third game in the franchise, hailed as the best game in the whole franchise. Now we'll see about that. Total game out Okay. Hold on, someone says it's a bit louder. Let me just turn the game down a little bit. This should be fine, I think. I don't want my audio to be much louder than, than the game, because... I'm gonna look fucking stupid. <laughs> uh, yo, Zertan, hey buddy. Yeah, fair enough. Hope you're doing well. Okay, play the game. Episode 1, Turnabout Memories. Mm. How did I get into this mess? Why? Why did I do that? Look, it's Phoenix! That girl, you shouldn't see her anymore. Hey, it's none of your business. I'm telling you for your sake. If you continue to see her, it's gonna be bad news. You're lying! Just listen to me. There's something you need to know about that girl. Stop it! Don't talk about her like that. Oh no. What the phoenix doing? It wasn't me. I didn't... Uh-oh. I didn't do it. Uh, yo, no, this is not my first time playing. Five years earlier, Mia Fey, second trial. I didn't play Baldur's Gate yet, no. But I'm probably gonna buy it at some point. But I also bought Elden Ring and I still haven't played that, so <laughs> I guess we'll see. Okay, hold on real quick. Uh, I'm gonna open... I was gonna say I'm gonna open the guide, but I don't think I'm gonna need it for this. But, you know, just in case, I'll have it open over here. Okay. It's finally time. I'm kind of nervous. Uh, look who it is! Oh, Mr. Grossberg. Good morning. Ah, oh, Mia, please calm yourself down. Yo, Klaus? Hell yeah. You're gonna get yourself arrested for being sussy, you know. What are you talking about? I'm relaxed. Look at me, I'm relaxed. Let go of my labels. <laughs> You obviously haven't got the temperament to, to be a lawyer. I'm so sorry, it's just, it's just that I'm so nervous today. Oh, that's right. This is your first time in the big leagues, isn't it? Well, never never you fear, my dear. I, Marvin Grosberg, am at your service. Uh, actually, this is my second time in court. Still, you surprised me. What with your earnest request last night. Let me handle this case, you suddenly said. And quite forcefully, too. I just found out yesterday about the case, I mean... Let's count how many liver problems Grossberg, Grossberg will have during the trial. <laughs> 100k stream, Elden Ring and B BG3 at the same... No. No. No! Um... Is that his logo on the shirt? What, this one? No. It's Batman. Do you guys like Batman? What? And you've already learned all the relevant facts? Well, about that. You see, I mean, of course I have, I think. Oh dear. In any case, don't let our client see you're, see you're nervous. You see the poor young man in the pink spot over there? That's our client. Yeah, I would see. How are you doing? <coughs> Good morning, there, everybody. 
Good morning. Try to keep smiling, Mia. I, uh, I just want to say, I'll give it all I've got. Yep, it'll be fine. No prob. Achoo! <laughs> no, what's wrong? Do you have a cold or something, Mr. Rai? Actually, it's right. Like the Flying Brothers, people screw it up all the time. And yes, I have a cold. That's what this mask is for. My dog says this way I won't give it to anyone else. Be kind to others, he says. Right, Mr. Wright, you have nothing to fear in court today. If you're truly innocent, I promise I'll save you. Uh, let go of my shirt. That's right, he's the, he's the one in trial, not you. He's the one who should be nervous. You need to stay strong for your client, Mia. My name is Mia Fay. I'm still pretty new at this lawyer thing. The first time I appeared in court was a year ago. Oh, I see, cause. But that trial traumatized me so badly I thought I'd never set foot in another courtroom. Uh, it's been one year since then, and well, here I am again. But this time, this time I'm gonna win. For my client and for myself. Court is now in session for the trial of Phoenix Wright. The defense is ready, Your Honor. <laughs> Look at pain. <laughs> the prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The defense today is Miss Miss Mia Fay, was it? Yes, Your Honor. Is there a problem? The judge is like the only one that never changes. Never, ever. I was under the impression that Marvin Grosberg was to be leading the defense. Yes, well, you see, Mr. Grosberg had a bit of an emergency. Emergency? But isn't that him standing right over there? Yes, well, you're just a rookie. Are you sure you can really handle this? Don't let him scare you, Mia. Give him your toughest look. Of course, Your Honor. I think. Mm, well, Mr. Payne, your opening statement, please. Hey, Leon, did you play TGA, the TGA duology? No, but I heard a lot about it. I think I bought it, too. Yeah, no, I haven't played them yet, but uh, maybe someday. Well, well, well. I can't believe a veteran like me has to spend his time babysitting a new defense lawyer. Don't worry, little girl. It will all be over soon. What was that all about? Was he trying to trash talk me? I love how all the starter cases just have this guy, or some variation of him. Now then, I'd like to proceed with a summary of events on the day in question. The incident occurred on the campus of Ivy University. The murder victim was a student named Doug Swallow. Yo, Hirumi Nakagawa, thank you for the dragon tier, buddy. Thank you. Thank you. He was a fourth year student studying pharma. Ph oh no. How do, you, how do you pronounce this? <laughs> Is it pharmacology? I think it's pharmacology. Phar pharmacology. Hmm, it sounds like he was a very bright young man. Yes, well, next we have a photo taken at the scene of the crime. Thank you for the pr pronunciation check. Students discovered th the scene shortly after the murder. They found the victim's body and the defendant, who had obviously bungled his getaway. They then called the police. If you lose this, does it create a time paradox? Yes. Yo, Prince Jay, welcome. That certainly makes the defendant look very sussy indeed. Very well. The court accepts this photo into the record as evidence. By the way, I can't quite tell the cause of death from this photo. <laughs> your reputation for sagacity is well earned, your honor. The truth is that this victim died a rather unusual death. Unusual death? What do you mean, Mr. Payne? 
Well, perhaps the defense would like to take this question. Huh? A simple question. I thought I might loosen you up a little. I am a genteel man, if you will. A what? Stand up to him. You gotta show him what you're made of. A uh, perfect opportunity. Well, what was it? The cause. Go on. Please never say sussy again. Okay, would you rather... On God, got that Rizzler? <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, guys. Please, forgive me. Please say you know at least this much. I'm so sorry. I didn't get a chance to read through the whole file. My hemorrhoids are beginning to act up. Don't you hate it when your hemorrhoids begin to act up? Yo, Xander, thank you for the dragon tier, buddy. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> now, see here. The details of the case are filed under the court records. Yeah, so we know this already. The cause of death. An electric shock. According to the court record, there was a fatal electric shock. In other words, electrocution. Electrocution? But how could such a thing happen? Did the murderer use some type of, some type of new, super-powerful stun gun, perhaps? The answer to that will become crystal clear as this trial proceeds, Your Honor. But before that, there is one more vital issue. What's that? Why, motive, of course. Yeah, and FK, I... I... Relatable. <laughs> Apparently, there was some bad blood between the victim and the defendant. Bad blood? What do you mean? Oopsie, I'm terribly sorry. You're the defense attorney, so you must know all about it. I shouldn't be stealing your spotlight like this. I really don't like this guy's smug attitude. That's Winston Payne for you. He's one smooth operator if you catch my drift. I don't catch your drift, actually. They don't call him the rookie killer for nothing, you know. I love that that's, like, his threat. Like, just, he throws all the work on the defense. What was the source of the bad blood between the victim and the defendant? And this time, I would like to see some supporting evidence. Evidence? What's that? Right. So I skipped all of that because it's just a tutorial. Now... Phoenix Wright girlfriend dated the victim Doug Swallow up until eight months ago. The reason for the bad blood between the two of them was this woman here. Dahlia Hawthorne, is it? Very good, Miss Faye. You seem to have picked up on at least this much. Always fill on purpose. The tutorial questions, they have the best dialogue. How do they now? Payne has the most ridiculous fucking hair. You telling me that... Okay. Okay, buddy. Mods. <laughs> but up until about eight months ago, she was with the victim, Mr. Swallow. Clearly, she has some part to play in this story. Ah, uh, he's done it again. Before the cross-examination starts, he's already got the judge thinking like he wants. Very well, Mr. Payne. Please call your first witness. If it pleases the court, the prosecution would like to call Mr. Phoenix Wright. What? The defendant himself? Well, Miss Faye? It's fine. After all, Mr. Wright is innocent, right? The defense has no objection. Oh, yeah. Witness, please state your name and occupation. Oh, uh, yes, my name is Phoenix Wright. My job is, uh, well, right now, I guess I'm a suspect. No, no, he means what did you do before you were arrested? Oh, I was a university student. Mr. Wright, you understand that you're suspected in the death of your fellow stu- But I didn't do it! I'm innocent, I tell you. I'm telling you, I was- Will the defendant please refrain from passing on his call to the rest of us? It seems the witness has something he wants to say. Well then, Mr. Wright, please tell us about your relation to the victim. Right away, Your Honor. The victim and I. Um, I, I admit I was there. But I'm not the killer. All I did was find his body. I hardly knew the guy to begin with. 
But I never even talked to that stuck-up British wannabe. <laughs> what? <laughs> British wannabe? I see, so you hardly knew the victim. Right, like I said, I'm not a killer. It looks like the judge understands. You're being naive, you know. Too naive. <laughs> it seems that you've forgotten one small thing, young lady. Guys, do your best impression of the pain left. Just got here. What did Phoenix do? So this is five years ago from the present time. Um, the, Mia was still like new to being a lawyer and she had a case where she was defending Phoenix. Allegedly, he killed someone in the university, so... This witness still has, some, has to undergo... Oh yeah, cross-examination. I keep forgetting that the first cases repeat a lot of the same stuff, like, you know, stuff you know. You wouldn't do that to me, would you? Chat, you wouldn't unsub, right? You wouldn't do that to me, right? So I think... I hardly need the guy to begin with. I think this is where you present... Oh god, uh, we have to start using... the lower save uh, slots. So, I hardly need the guy to begin with, but that should be a lie because... No, no, I was wrong. Okay, maybe we press this. So I didn't know his face or even his name, right? Right. Uh, well, no, th that is, I mean... So, which is it? Do you know him or not? Now, see here, he can't avoid answering the question by sneezing all day. I've unsubbed and took your Yakuza stuff. Mods. The solution to anything. Just call the mods. News to me? Why didn't he tell me that before? I heard he used to he used to date Dolly. Who is this Dolly person? Oh, that would be the defendant's lover, Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. Oh, I see. Ah, oh, young love, so bittersweet. But that's all I knew about him. Uh. Maybe this is where where we present something. Actually, no, wait, wait, wait. Are there even any mods here? Yeah! Me. <laughs> so when I say mods, I'm really just saying, have a Leon 7. Mr. Wright, you stated the following in your testimony. I hardly knew the guy to begin with. That's right. I mean, why would I even... But that doesn't sound right. If you hardly knew him, then why would you say that the victim was a stuck-up British wannabe? Well, Mr. Wright? No, it wasn't me. I'm not a killer, I swear. Leon's mods are as real as the Saijima family. He didn't have to roast me like that. <laughs> Mr. Wright. I will give you an opportunity to revise your testimony. How is it that you knew the victim was, as you put it, a British wannabe? Yes, well... He was always walking around with a huge Union Jack on the back of his shirt. Uh... I think we present the photo now. It's funny that he says this. I actually have a shirt with, like, the British flag on it. So I guess I'm a Br British wannabe as well. <laughs> Uh... Leon when he spots a Yakuza 5 fan in chat. Hey, come on. I'm nice to them, okay? Yeah, I'm sure. It was right there on his back. Miss Faye, is there some point to this line of questioning? Your Honor, please take another look at the crime scene photo. As you can see, there is absolutely nothing on the victim's back. Hey, wait a minute! He's wearing a leather jacket. The, un the Union Jack was on the back of the t-shirt he was wearing. 
I was under the impression that you accidentally came across the body. But if that was really the case, then you wouldn't know that, would you? You'd have no idea at all what he was wearing underneath that jacket. Mr. Wright, you've been lying to me. Please forgive me. He was such a crybaby, goddamn. <laughs> Mia, you made our client cry. I'm a Yakuza Dead Souls fan. Mods, promote him. Yo, Sulfur. Hope you're doing well, buddy. Welcome. <laughs> You know, the latest short that I made, um, if you guys watch that, I it generally made me consider just making like a full-on, detailed, clear, respectful, uh, like video essay on why on my personal gripes with the Yakuza 5. I, I might do it at, like soon, maybe. I don't know. But like we're playing as attorney now, so I don't know when I'm gonna do it. <laughs> Mia! Oh wait, I read this. Let him! That P on his chest doesn't stand for Phoenix anyways. It stands for PP head. I can't believe I trusted him. Mr. Wright was all wrong. <laughs> that was an impressive bit of cross-examination. Thank you. Oh, he said he said thank you as well. Thank you for uncovering the defendant's lies for me. It's quite clear that this man did not simply stumble upon the scene of the crime. Hi. <laughs> Uh-oh, did I go too far? By the way, Mr. Wright, you seem to have a rather bad cold. Have you taken any medicine for it? I, uh, uh yeah, I took some, but... Was the medicine that you took an over-the-counter brand called Cold Killer X? Now, why does that look familiar, I wonder? Yeah, that's right, it kills colds good. Hey, wait a second. How did you know I'm a big fan of Cold Killer X? <laughs> Would you happen to have that medicine with you right now? Well, actually, I seem to have lost it somewhere. You lost it. Does this even have anything to do with the case? Mr. Wright, shall I tell you where your cold medicine is right now? Huh? Your Honor, I'd like you to take a look at another photo from this crime scene. Uh-oh. What's this? In the victim's hand, it's... It's Cold Killer X. Addiction! I don't even know if I'm a Dead Souls fan because of the emulator crashiness. Say, I mean, honestly, ever since I got my new upgrade for the PC, it's been crashing uncontrollably for me as well. It feels bad. It goes to show, like, if you guys are thinking or, like, you're stressing upgrading your PC a lot, being in the middle is actually the best for the average person. Because, like, if you jump to the latest uh, graphics card or whatever, chances are that's still being, you know, optimized for with a lot of the games and software, you know what I mean? So. Uh, please, it would go hard. I gave five a chance twice. Honestly, I only like curious parts. Hey, yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. But I do wonder, like, how much I would talk about stuff in that game. Because the thing about making videos... You know, you uh, you always think about how much you want to extend or how much you want to not extend, right? So it could be as long as 10 hours or it could be as little as an hour or, or even less sometimes. I have an even more controversial take than people who like Yakuza 5. I dislike Like a Dragon. Honestly, I feel like that's not a controversial take at all. Because, like, it's been there since the, the, the announcement of that game, really. Um, anyway, guys, we're here for Ace Attorney, right? I'm sorry, but I'm afraid that argument won't work. There's no doubt as to who this bottle of Cold Killer X belongs to. Especially since Mr. Wright's fingerprints all, all over it. Uh-oh. We're Yakuza fans. We hate all Yakuza games. There's no controversial takes. Spit your shit, my king. <laughs> or something. Sensing his murderous intent, Mr. Swallow must have picked up the bottle of medicine. Dropped by Mr. Wright and hit, hit it in his uh, hand. 
Oh, guys, come on. You're not serious about that, right? We all love Payne's voice. His purpose in doing so can only have been to identify his killer as Phoenix Wright. Uh -oh. I can't believe Phoenix Wright would do this. Order. Order in the court. Your Honor, I'd like to present this photo and bottle as evidence. Very well. Also, the victim's wristwatch was broken. Broken? Yes, it ceased functioning when a large wave of electricity passed through it. Well, Mr. Wright, do you have some kind of explanation for all of this? This is really bad. Oh, my buttocks. You know... <laughs> I forgot that he just, like, blatantly... Well, says this. My poor, poor hemorrhoids. Guys, would it be cringe if I also talk about my ass during streams? What really happened? The truth is, I went because he called me. He was in the pharmacology department, so we agreed to meet at 2.45 behind that building. We talked for a bit, and then at around 3 we split up. Then later when I went back, I found him lying there. I've been taking Cold Killer X for the last two or three days, but I lost my bottle of it around lunchtime on the day of the accident. Mr. Wright, that's completely different from the testimony you gave previously. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I was afraid you wouldn't believe the truth. You'll forgive me if I say I hardly find your current testimony any more credible. Miss Fay, please begin your cross-examination. Oh, please, Mr. Wright, don't tell any more lies. I remember hating Von Karma's voice so much when playing AA1. Really? I actually really love it, despite, you know... Him being who he is. He goes hard. What really happened? Uh, talk to her a bit. Wait, hold on. Uh, 3.05, I guess. I'm gonna press everything. Demon objections, yeah. Uh, have you ever met the victim before then? Actually, hold on. in the department, okay. Was it Mr. Swallow who indicated you should meet at 2.45? Have you ever met someone with the, with the name Swallow? Yeah, and we were both there right on time. He said the victim was in the pharmacology department, correct? Yeah, he was studying how to manufacture and improve pharmaceuticals. Everyone called him the alchemist of IVU. An alchemist, I see. Yo, Baba. We all love Ace Attorney here. Welcome. I gotta admit it. I gotta admit, it was a little sussy. He had a whole lab and everything. And it was filled with chemicals and strange machines that run on high voltage electricity. How fascinating. He sounds like he was quite an ambitious young man. What do I do? I was wondering if you could tell us about the pharmacology department. Well, okay, sure. I don't know all that much, though. A little bit earlier in your testimony, you said something interesting. You said the department uses strange machines that run on high-voltage electricity. That's right, and they sure look dangerous. They use non-standard voltages, so there are high-voltage cables everywhere. High-voltage cables. Yeah, there were uh, electric poles set up all around the building. The high-voltage cables run overhead around the roof. Finally, I think we're getting somewhere. Um, wait, hold on. Uh, 
I lost my bottle of it around lunchtime. On the day of the incident, what did he do for lunch? Guys, what did he have for lunch today? If it's lunchtime already, or... You know. Uh... <laughs> Yo, Shirabi. What does that have to do with anything? You can never be too sure. I always eat with Dolly, just the two of us. Dolly's homemade lunches are just the greatest. Mmm, her mini omelettes are magically delicious. <laughs> Youch! Why did you punch me in the jaw? Oh, I'm sorry. I just felt like hurting someone all of a sudden. I think that's enough for now. So the defendant and the victim met at approximately the time of his death. And then the defendant returned to the scene for some unknown reason. I'm not entirely convinced by his explanation about the medicine bottle either. Haven't ate yet. Pepperoni. Chicken nuggets. Damn, guys. You're going in. Let me be frank here, Mr. Wright. Your testimony cannot be trusted. What do you mean? There he goes again. I knew it was too much work for a little girl. However, there is one mystery that still remains. There is, Your Honor? How the murder was carried out, of course. Just how was the victim electrocuted? I don't believe the murder weapon has been produced yet, correct? Holy shit, the judge thinks? I know, right? You better believe it. Well, that is, I, uh, you're correct, Your Honor. So how exactly was Mr. Swallow killed? If I could somehow establish how it was done, maybe I could still come out of this mess smelling like a rose. Um... Your Honor. Yes, Miss Faye. I believe that if we were to piece together everything we've heard up until now, we should be able to solve the mystery of how Mr. Swallow died. That would be most impressive. <laughs> Why do I do this? <laughs> Quite the brash statement coming from a rookie. But even a beginner like you must understand the basic rules of the court, yes? An attorney must be able to substantiate their arguments with evidence. Of course I know that. Actually, I had totally forgotten about that. Now then, Miss Faye, let me see what you've got. Show me how you believe the victim was electrocuted. As for the cause of death, I'd say this picture captures it quite well. What? But there's nothing in... There's nothing that even remotely resembles a murder weapon here. Hmm. I'm afraid the defense is gonna have to explain this in a bit more detail. Miss Faye, where is the weapon? Just watch this. Watch, watch. Well, naturally, it's right here. That's... That's... What is that? A, s a severed electrical cable, I believe, Your Honor. Remember the testimony we've heard. The machines the pharmacology students use in their experiments require high voltage. And because of that, there are special high voltage cables strung up everywhere. So then the high voltage cable... Yes! The cable is the cause of death. That is the most likely explanation. That certainly sounds plausible. Well, Mr. Payne, what do you have to say about this? Well, I believe some praise is in order. Don't toy with me, old man. Now, now, the victim's cause of death may indeed have been a high voltage cable. However, I want you to think about what that really implies. The only one who had the opportunity to use the cable as a murder weapon was... The defendant. <laughs> uh, that much is certainly true. Yes, and that's not all. We have proof. Irrefutable tr proof that will establish that Mr. Wright was the murderer. You do? Well, what is it? His fingerprints. Fingerprints? You mean the... The bottle? Let's take another look at the crime scene photo. As you can see, the victim is wearing a leather jacket. 
And as you may know, leather holds fingerprints quite well. Uh-oh. You mean... Yes, it was quite clearly imprinted on the chest area of the victim's jacket. The palm print of the defendant's very own hand. What? I can only think of one way Mr. Wright could have left a print like that. Intent on murder. He squarely pushed the victim towards the severed electrical cable. I think we can conclude that there is no reason to continue with this cross-examination. Stick a fork in us, we're done. Mr. Crossberg! My hemorrhoids never lie, the show is over, Mia. I knew that boy was guilty for the first time I saw him. No, you're wrong! Mr. Wright is innocent. Maybe he went in for a Hong Kong, yeah. <laughs> no further evidence is required to convince me of this man's guilt. Your Honor! At this time, I'm prepared to render a verdict in this case. Do you have something further to add, Miss Fay? Is this what you want, Mr. Wright? You still haven't told us the truth. The whole truth. If you don't say something now, the judge is gonna hand down his verdict. But I... I can't. I just can't say it. If I told you what really happened, then I'd be... It's okay, Mr. Wright. I'm your attorney. You can trust me. Miss Fay. No matter what it is you have to say, I believe in you and I'll represent you to the very end. We've already established the defendant's guilt. There's no further need for him to say anything. Wait a minute. Mr. Wright! This guy treats his hemorrhoids like a fortune teller with their cards. Yeah. <laughs> uh, don't ask me how that works. Yeah, maybe that's why he's just called Grossberg, I guess. I'll tell you what really happened. I already told you, Mr. Wright. There's no need for further... I... I did it. I admit it. I pushed him. It's my fault. Uh... That girl, you shouldn't see her anymore. Hey, it's none of your business. I'm telling you for your sake. If you continue to see her, it's gonna be bad news. You're lying. Just listen to me. There's something you need to know about that girl. Stop it. Don't talk about her like that. Uh-oh. <laughs> What you just said, was that the truth? Yes, I I was afraid, afraid that if I told the truth, everyone would think I was the murderer for sure. Well, as things currently stand, you're, we're all absol absolutely convin convinced you are. Please, please give me one more chance to explain. This time I swear, I swear I'll tell the whole truth. I'll, it'll be okay, won't it, Miss Faye? I believe in you. Oh, um, thank you. I still can't believe it. He really did push the victim. Uh, it feels like... Oh, no. <laughs> My hemorrhoids are doing the Harlem Shake. Oh, no. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, guys, the Grossberg Shaker. Imagine that. <laughs> oh, God. I didn't need that image. When I pushed the victim. That guy. He was talking bad about Dolly. That's not a new addition, right? That That's always... It's always been there? Like, I doubt they changed it. <laughs> I lost my temper and gave him a shove, that son of a bitch. At that moment, I heard some kind of loud noise. A little while after I left, I started to get worried. So I went back, but he was just lying there, dead. Well, the explanation is really quite simple. When he pushed him, Mr. Swallow flew back and touched the electrical cable. He died from the shock, and that, as they say, is that. Please tell me he's gonna come back in a later case. 
I actually don't know, but he was there in the previous two games, so... <laughs> and he also did talk about his hemorrhoids, I think, in those games. Uh, same as OG, okay. Which makes the reference really dated nowadays. Yeah. yeah no, the, the Harlem Shake did, like, you know, become a meme in, like, 2012, give or take. But I think it's older than that. Um, which is interesting. Da, 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 da. At the time of the incident, a light rain had been falling. Wet from the rain, the victim was more easily electrocuted. But when I pushed him, there weren't any electrical cables nearby. If there had been something like that, even I would have noticed it. That's true. Even a doofus like him could have missed that. Miss Faye, let me warn you right now that if your cross-examination doesn't yield any new facts, I intend to deliver my verdict without further delay. Are we clear on that? Uh-oh. Are they already, like, um, penalizing us? If he's innocent, there must be some kind of evidence somewhere that will prove it. That guy, he was talking bad about Dolly. Um... A loud noise? What would you say that loud noise was, Mr. Wright? I'm not sure, but it was really loud. It was like, snap! You know, come to think of it, I wonder what that was. Oh, there he goes again. Clearly, your honor, it was the sound of the victim being electrocuted. Addiction! You're not qualified to decide that. What should I do? Ask for more details. Mr. Wright, that loud noise you heard may be extremely important. So try to remember what it was. Uh, how do I put it? It was like a sharp crack. Ah, could it, could it have been... Yes, could it have been? Hurry up and tell us. When I pushed him, he dropped the umbrella he was holding. He fell right on top of it and it broke. That was probably the noise I heard. An umbrella, huh? And did that umbrella belong to the victim? Yeah, it was a plastic umbrella. Cheap and frail, kind of like the owner. Then again, I wish I had any kind of umbrella. I was totally soaked to the bone. Uh, Miss Faye. What do you think? Is there something important about that testimony? Well... Of course it's important. This is it, Mia. The new information you've been waiting for. Of course it's important. No! This cheap umbrella is more than important. It's vital! I want to officially have it entered into the testimony. How perfectly fitting. Flimsy information for a flimsy lawyer. Bro thinks he can roast like Phoenix. Phoenix killed him for the umbrella and then found out it was a cheap one, yeah? <laughs> Imagine that. Is it like Danganronpa or something? I did hear people comparing this to Danganronpa, yeah, I guess. I didn't play Danganronpa, so I'm not the best person to ask. But um, maybe somebody here played both. Um, yo, my cat is Yakuza. I am acing the attorney, yeah. Are you acing the day? After I shoved him, he fell down on top of his cheap umbrella. Huh. It's a good distance away. Why didn't you testify about the umbrella from the very beginning? Come on, if I had mentioned that, I would have been able to counter the prosecution's arguments earlier. What do you mean by that? Take another look at the crime scene photo. Shirosaki sensei has come a long way. That she did. According to Mr. Wright, the victim fell on top of his umbrella. However, if you look closely, the umbrella is nowhere near the victim. Actually, it's by the electrical pole. You're absolutely right. The conclusion here is obvious. After the defendant left, the victim moved from where he fell. In other words... 
Oh, announce the truth for the third game. It's so good. After he was pushed by the defendant, Mr. Swallow was still alive. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> Order! Order! The victim! He moved? Mr. Payne, the umbrella in this photo, where is it now? Well, it was collected by the police at the crime scene. I want to present it as evidence immediately. L listen to this part. Wait, 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 wait for the drop, hold on. But the umbrella could have simply been blown there by the wind. Attention! Must have been the wind. <laughs> According to the testimony, According to the testimony, the victim fell on top of the umbrella. There's simply no way it could have been blown there by the wind. <laughs> oh, but... Yeah, I know, shut the fuck up, man. I know this matter of the umbrella seems relatively trivial. But, as long as the smallest doubt remains, I cannot render final judgment! Yeah, tell him, judge! <laughs> I must say, I still find it hard to believe that a huge hole has been blown in the prosecution's case by the defendant's testimony. Well done, Mia. Oh no. Mr. Payne, what are you chuckling about? Pardon me, Your Honor. It seems I was expecting too much of a free ride. It was foolish to think I could establish the guilt through cross-examination alone. I'm afraid I don't follow what you're saying. Let me guess, you have another witness. Exactly. And this witness's testimony will be incontrovertible. Incontro See, I can English. Well, who is this witness? Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. Dahlia Hawthorne? You don't mean Dolly? I do, Your Honor. The defendant's very own lover is a witness to the whole thing. That's right, she was at the scene of the crime when the murder took place. What? <laughs> yes, Steph. I'm sorry to break the bad news to you, my dear. Oh. Bad news. You couldn't be more wrong. Actually, I've been waiting for this. You can't be serious. <laughs> Mia, what do you mean by that? I think this is a good point for us to stop at. Court will now enter a 20-minute recess. Afterwards, we will listen to the testimony of Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. 20 minutes. You could have a whole meal in that. And coffee. I want coffee. Oh, oh, by the way, I got an article just pop up out of nowhere a few days ago saying, um, coffee creamer apparently expires in two weeks, like generally speaking. And I was like, wait a minute, is that why the coffee I make at home has been tasting kind of weird? Or, like, am I just tripping and the article is, like, saying bullshit? Does anybody know? Might be interesting to discuss this now that, you know, we have a group of people here. Because um, if that's the case, I will need to buy new coffee creamer. <laughs> so, yeah. Miss Faye, I'm sorry. About what happened back there, hi. It's alright, at least he told us the truth in the end, Mr. Wright. Yeah, so I guess I can start to relax then, huh? Relax, my boy? You can't be serious. After hiding such important facts. Hours never last that long? So wait. How long is it supposed to last? If that's the case, then... No, no, not milk creamer, powder creamer. Yeah, powder, powder. I need to check the expiration date again, because... I, I just assumed, like, it's like most uh, products where it can last months. Oh, really? Damn, okay. Man, I feel kind of dumb. <laughs> well, I am dumb sometimes, but... So... Coffee lasts longer than creamer, right? I didn't check. Coffee creamer lasts for two weeks after open being opened, 
but if unopened, multiple months. Ooh, okay, we need to throw the one we have then. She'll save me. I just know she will. <laughs> oh, Phoenix. Why do you think that? Oh, what do you mean? She, She's the love of my life, that's why. Ladies and gentlemen, this case is going to show you why you don't simp for people blindly. The love of your life, huh? Leon, what is an expiration date? I, I thought when I, like... Okay, look. I had the impression that they last, like, way longer. But I guess they don't. I need, I need to... Yeah, I need to read the expiration date. <laughs> Would you mind telling me more about you and Miss Dahlia Hawthorne? Sure. <coughs> Pardon me. Sure, no problem. Dahlia and I, we first met about eight months ago. Right here in this very courthouse. Actually, I'm studying to be a lawyer on the side. Anyway. One day, she and I just bumped into each other in the reading room downstairs. That's why I really think it was fate that brought us together. Oh, how sweet. I thought the powder one would last longer since powder milk lasts a while. Liquid creamer would be a week or two. I never use liquid creamers. It's always powder with me. <laughs> I gotta ask, is there a reason he has a giant P on his chest? Maybe he just likes P. The letter, not that. Well, actually, you'll find out soon, I think. Uh... Leon, when his coffee is so expired, it's basically alive. Perfect. <laughs> uh, okay, no, I'm, I'm thankful that's not how I've been, because, like, for a while now, like, so long, I felt like my coffee just doesn't taste right. But I haven't made coffee here for, like, for a while as well, so... Oh, here, take a look at this. She gave this to me the day we met as a symbol of our love. She had been wearing it around her neck that day, but then... She took it off, but before she gave it to me, she said, I want you to carry this. She gave it to you as a present, I see. This darling little bottle is filled with memories of my darling little dolly. It certainly is a little bottle, right? It makes me so happy. I show it to everyone I meet. I want to share my happiness with the whole world. Powder lasts months. Oh... Uh, you bring up food poisoning, but I did get poisoned, like... How long ago was it now? Two months ago, give or take? Man. It's funny how common poisoning is, but also, it's one of the worst things you could ever have. Ah, uh, it's horrible. Anyway. So after that, you said you started dating. Yeah, but she's so shy. Every time I see her, she's always... She always says the same thing to me. Please give it back now. That doesn't sound shy. <laughs> yeah. What a strange girl, asking for a present back like that. By the way, Mr. Wright. The day you first met Dolly Hawthorne eight months ago, it wouldn't happen to have been on the on August 27th, would it? Huh? Yeah, it was. But how did you... This happened on August 27th, right here in this courthouse. What's this? A newspaper clipping? Let's see. Murder in courthouse? Murder? What are you reading there? Let me see that. Oh. I see. Mia, I think I understand what you're trying to say. And I think I understand why you suddenly took such a keen interest in this case. You believe there is some connection between these two cases, am I correct? I hope you don't mind, Mr. Grossberg. I I need to finish this myself. Ah, uh, yes, but I'm afraid what you have will not be enough, my dear. I'll go and have a look in the downstairs reading room and see what else I can find. Thank you. I want to do whatever I can to be of help to you, Mia. Well, it looks like recess is about over. We'd better all get moving. <laughs> mm. I think it should last longer, though, because powdered milk lasts three months after opening. Right. Well, I'll, I'll make sure... I mean, God, this all sounds dumb in hindsight, but I will make sure to read the expiration date. Again, it's just that 
I had the impression that they do last months, you know, the powdered creamer. But out of nowhere, I just get an article saying, hey, no, they last two weeks. So, like, I, I had my brain just freeze. That recess sure seemed longer than 20 minutes, though. To be continued. Court will now reconvene. Mr. Payne, please call your witness. I don't even remember getting food poisoning. Be thankful. You don't want to get food poisoning, ever. <laughs> like, you know, getting cold is one thing. It sucks, but it's one thing. Food poisoning? <laughs> Anybody who got food poisoning in chat, how would you describe it? Um, if I had to put it in a way that would really... Uh, how, like, what, what, what do I want to say? That gives you a feel for it, I guess. Uh, you're gonna be best friends with the toilet for like two weeks. Give or take. Uh, this next person is someone who witnessed the crime as it happened. The prosecution calls Miss Dahlia Hawthorne to the stand. I felt like the food was fighting back. Yeah, see, <laughs> that's, uh, that's one way to put it. Uh-oh. What's with the stiff silence? In my long career as a judge, I have been deceived by many witnesses. It's my job to doubt, to take no one at their word. But in your case, I must admit that, you're, that you radiate a glow of complete sincerity. Oh no, okay. It's one thing for Phoenix to simp. What the fuck do we do when the judge simps? Ugh. You think we had it bad with April, May in the first game? Oh, think twice. <laughs> How old is Dahlia? I feel like that... 20. But that that's a question that, like... <laughs> Never mind. I can't believe you actually said that. Actually, yeah, like, what the fuck, Judge? <laughs> it's one thing to think something, but then saying that is like, dude, who the fuck put you up for this job? Oh, uh, now then, witness? Could you please state your full name? I, uh... Don't worry, sweetie. There's no... Oh, no! I wanna... I wanna go through the screen and punch this guy right now. There's no need to be nervous. If anyone says anything rude, you can be sure I'll cut them right down to size. And I will bash them with my gavel. I love how they look straight at me when they say that. Okay, I'll... <laughs> Oh my god. Thank you for calming my nerves. You're all so nice, I almost feel right at home. Not at all. It was nothing. If we may move on now, what is your full name and occupation? My name is Dahlia Hawthorne. I'm a junior in literature... I can't speak. Literature at Ivy University. I just want to say, it's an honor for me to be here in your noble presence. The honor is all mine. No, the honor is all- oh my god. I never understood the simping when Mia's way more attractive than her. Amen. <laughs> Actually. Well, we know whose milkshake brings all the boys to the yard. That is such an old- me oh my god. Were you guys around for this one? My milkshake brings all the boys to the yard. Ooh, I forgot the rest, but... Um, sir? Is there something I can help you with? You just go on and say whatever's on you- oh my- GUYS! Don't think with your fucking- I'm sure that there must be some kind of mistake. Feeny would never kill anyone, I just know it. Yes, yes, I can see why you'd say that. She's gonna be a tough witness, alright. It only took her 12 seconds to wrap them all around her little finger. Now then, please proceed with your testimony. Let's hear about what you witnessed on the day of the incident, if you please. Is 
Is that a meme? It's from a song, like an old... Well, I feel old saying it's an old song, but it's like... God, I don't know, almost 20 years ago. And then, you know, it just kind of became popular. I have been planning to go back to Feeny's place after class was over. Feeny and Dogi. They were talking behind the building. Then suddenly, Dogi all got all wobbly and just collapsed. That's when Feeny noticed that I was there. I went to go and find some other students, and they called the authorities. Guys, do you call your special someone with a name like that? Feeny. Feeny. Davy. Dogi. Uh. Wait, hold on. Okay, here we go. I don't know what to say. According to you, Miss Hawthorne, the defendant didn't do anything wrong. It's that easy, guys. Young lady. As old as I am, even I recall how hot the flames of a young of young passion can burn. Nevertheless, it is my job to discover the truth. Please tell us the truth. Lee oh no. Bruno. Mods. <laughs> Bad Bruno. <laughs> but I I would never How old is Payne? That's a good question. Can we even see him here? 49? 61? Bruh, what? Wait, since when was Marvin this old? I'm more shocked by this. Yo, Sunrise, hope you're doing well too, buddy. That's more than enough, Witness. I won't allow this to continue. What do you mean by that? Please, just let me proceed with my cross-examination, Your Honor. I, for one, don't plan to win my case on a bunch of paper-thin lies. Teehee! You haven't changed a bit, Mia Fey. Yeah, the judge's age is a mystery. Nobody will know. What's this? So you two are acquainted? Yes, we've met before. Once. In any case, Miss Fay, the floor is all yours. It's good to see you again, Madame Fay. Madame, I'm no one's grandma yet, girly. Is Madame that degrading? Yeah, the judge is probably twenty-five. I've been planning to go... Dougie got all wobbly and collapsed. Are you saying that the victim just collapsed on his own? Yes. In other words, the defendant never touched the victim, is that right? I was watching the whole time. Feeny never did a thing to Dougie. If I press her for no good reason, I just know the judge will get angry with me. How? Uh, let's show the contradiction. <laughs> she probably called her Oba son. Yeah. Yeah. Feeble lies are not very becoming, Miss Hawthorne. So let's drop them, shall we? What? I. I would never. Oh, she made her cry. How could she? Miss Fay, I will not allow you to badger this witness. <laughs> I believe the defense is engaged in a, a fishing expedition. Uh, what? That is, uh, she has no supporting. <laughs> the cold fucking stare. Please don't glare at me like that, I'm just doing my job. Now then, Miss Hawthorne. Yo, Buzz. Hell yeah. The defendant's palm print was found on Mr. Swallow's leather jacket. It has already been shown that Mr. Wright did, in fact, push the victim. What? There's no need to try to cover for the defendant. It would be much better if you came out and told us the whole truth. There's nothing to worry about, young lady. Just tell us everything yet that you saw. Yes, Your Honor. I will. If you don't mind, I'd like to revise my testimony. Looks like we're finally getting somewhere. Actually, I didn't see the moment he pushed Dougie. Wait a minute. Objection! 
I'm using a guide and I still fuck up. How cringe is that? One, two, three, four. It didn't look like they were fighting. Oh yeah? Objection! Have a good night, Rain. By the way, this game's pursuit... No, it didn't play yet. You say you didn't hear anything unusual, is that correct? Yes, that's why I was very relaxed looking at the scenery around me. Oh, she's cooking. That's nice, but I find that just a little odd. I have here the testimony of your boyfriend, Mr. Phoenix Wright. And he clearly testified to the effect that when he pushed the victim, he heard a sharp, loud noise. He said that? If you were really that close to the two of them, why didn't you hear this noise as well? Well, maybe the noise was just not memorable. But according to Mr. Wright's testimony, it was a sharp noise, like a snap. There's no way a noise like that could fail to make an impression. Yeah, hell yeah, we're doing it. Um, oh no. May I have a moment to answer? By all means. I know the reason why I didn't hear the noise. Uh-oh. You see, the truth is, I had my headphones on and I was listening to music at the time. Headphones? You mean that, that both of your ears were covered? The rain was just beginning to let up. But it seemed as though Thor wasn't ready for his fun t to come to an end yet. So the sky continued to flash and rumble. Thunder and lightning, huh? Oh, speaking of thunder and lightning, we had some strong ones a few days ago. Like a lot of rain. The streets, or at least some of them, were like flooded. Um... But when I say flooded, I mean, like, they're annoying to drive in. It's not impossible, but it's also not advisable. I'm afraid of the sound of thunder, so I put my headphones on to block it out. Well, Your Honor? As you can see, there weren't any contradictions in her testimony after all. I think she's right, guys. I mean, why would she... Why would someone like her lie? I know, that's what I'm telling chat. Wait a sec, Mia, that testimony just now. She said something that could change this whole case. There was lightning. Your Honor, there's a problem with the witness's testimony. What do you mean? Didn't you notice she said there was lightning, correct? Yes, what about it? Well, lightning is actually a large discharge of electricity in the atmosphere, am I right? Now's not a time for a science lesson, Miss Faye. Yes, Your Honor. Anyway, since the cause of death was electrocution, isn't it possible that the victim died from being hit by a bolt of lightning? Oh! Yeah, it seems like a lot of the Middle East had a lot of, like, rain and thunder. It's really interesting that Dahlia has lots of butterflies flapping around her, considering they're known deceivers. I'm gonna pretend I didn't see that. <laughs> Listen, she's a pure girl, okay? I must admit that the thought had not occurred to me. Just what kind of thoughts do occur to this guy, anyway? Oh, you know. You know. This entire case is built on the premise that Mr. Dog Swallow was murdered. But that very premise itself is mistaken. The defense believes that Mr. Swallow is, in fact, the victim of a stray bolt. It appears the defense may be onto something. Could it be that the death was actually accidental? Alright, you did it, Mia. I'll be- oh. oh, there he goes again. I'm hurt that you have such a low opinion of me, Miss Faye. Huh? I'm not a fool, you know. The prosecution has done its research, Your Honor. We found that there were no lightning strikes on that day at, the, at that location. Uh-oh. What's more, we have evidence that the electrical cable is definitely linked to the case. Evidence, Mr. Payne. Well, what is this evidence? The Safi David. And who is this Safi David from? The pharmacology students who were conducting experiments in their labs that day. Allow me to read out to the court the testimony of the pharmacology students. Yeah, this is a prequel. 
or well, uh, the case is in the past. All equipment in the labs lost power all of a sudden at around 3 p.m. that day. Was it a blackout? All of the lab's equipment runs on high voltage, Your Honor. So you're saying the equipment lost power because... Precisely. They lost power because of the severed electrical cable. The power outage occurred at approximately 3 p.m. Which fits with the time of death listed in the autopsy report. Exactly. In other words, the victim died as a result of touching the cable. According to the students, the cables were very old. They were planning on having them replaced in the near future. I see. Apparently the cables had become so brittle that the even the smallest bump would have caused them to break. Bruh, so wouldn't wind also like do something? However, there is one thing that troubles me. If the cable could have been broken by any small bump, then it wouldn't have snapped if it had been hadn't been bumped into, correct? Well, I suppose you could say that. Miss Faye, do you have any thoughts regarding the cause of the severed cable? Uh... I don't like how this is looking one bit. I have to come up with something to try to regain some momentum. If it pleases the court, the defense would like to state its opinion. Well then, let's hear it. Who or what was it that caused the cable to break? Your Honor, please think back to Mr. Wright's testimony. The defendant's testimony. He said that after he pushed the victim, he heard a, lo a loud, sharp noise. Now, this happened at around 3 p.m., correct? Yes, that sounds right. Wait, are you saying that... The lab equipment lost power at 2.55 p.m., which fits right in Mr. Phoenix, uh, Mr. Wright's timeline. In other words, it was Mr. Wright's shove that caused the power outage. Yes, the prosecution also came to the same conclusion. And it was that very shove that caused Mr. Swallow to be electrocuted. I'm afraid I can't agree with you there, Mr. Payne. What's that supposed to mean? Take a, take a good look at where the victim landed after being shoved. See that umbrella? It's by the electrical pole. That's right, the victim banged into that pole as a result of being pushed. It was that impact that caused the cable to break. Huh. Well, that makes sense. And then the victim was electrocuted. Yeah, Phoenix is, uh... He's packing. I'm sorry, Your Honor, but no, it doesn't make sense at all. If the victim was shoved into the far pole, then he couldn't have been electrocuted by this severed cable in the foreground here. Got him. In other words, someone other than my client must have electrocuted the victim. Order! Order in the court! Ah, uh, the lamentations of my enemy. How I've longed to hear them. It's true. The defense is absolutely correct. That doesn't... Oh, oh there she goes again. Uh, Mr. Judge, sir, may I say something? If you had to entrust the case to Yagami or Phoenix, who would you pick? Phoenix. Phoenix. I think. The Madame Attorney's explanation... She said some things that are a little different than I remember them. Uh-oh. Please, just once more. May I please testify one last time? Please, Mr. Judge? Of course it's alright. Just go right ahead and give your new testimony. Oh my god. This is it. She's finally starting to show her true colors. The truth is, Feeney pushed him twice. The first time was into the pole, that's when the cable broke. Then Dougie tried his best to run away from him, but Feeney caught up and crashed into him from behind. The cable snapping and Dougie being electrocuted, it all occurred in less than one minute. And a, a minute. 
So after being shoved, the victim got up and tried to run away. And that is when the defendant pushed him for the second time. I'm so sorry, Feeney, but I, I just had to tell the truth. Am I doing the right thing? Am I, Mr. Judge? Of course you are, my dear. As painful as it may seem, you are. Now then, Miss Faye, you may proceed with your cross-examination. It all occurred in less than a minute, she says. We got something to say about that. Objection! That's enough, witness. I'm afraid I don't understand. You will in a minute. Could you please take a look at this picture? Oh, that medicine. That's the one Feeney likes to take for his cold. It's not the medicine I want you to look at. It's the wristwatch. It stopped at the precise time the victim was electrocuted. In other words, 3.05 p.m. Yes, and your point is, Miss Faye? My point is this. What time was it when the lab suffered that power outage due to the cable snapping? Well, according to the student's testimony, the answer is clear. It was 2.55. <gasps> Would you care to explain to the court, Miss Dahlia Hawthorne, what exactly happened during this 10 minute interval? Fucking got him! The defense proposes that it was during this interval that the real murderer killed Mr. Doug Swallow. Order! Oh. This is nonsense. The real murderer? God, the announced that the truth of this game is so good. Even you can't deny that the time between the cable break, breaking, and the electrocution are completely unaccounted for. Then who was it? Who else are you saying could have done it? Ah, oh, this is her moment. There is only one person who could have murdered Mr. Swallow. Only after my client had left the scene. Was there a window of opp opportunity for the real killer? Miss Faye. Is the defense ready to indict someone as this real killer? It's finally time. This is the moment I've been waiting for. Yes, your honor, we are ready. Damn, I got hit with, it, with an ad as soon as things got serious. <laughs> That's how you know things get serious, you got an ad. If you accuse the wrong person, you will be penalized. Think very carefully before you speak, Miss Faye. Now then, Miss Faye, let's have it. Who's the real killer? What is the song? Announce the truth. Uh, and then just type the name of the game. Trials and Tribulations. All of the games have like... Like, how do I say? All of the games have an announce the truth, like, track. And they all have a pursuit track, you know, that kind of thing. This is the... Uh, Announce the truth for this game. Okay, guys, what what if we accuse this guy? <laughs> That's enough simping. But of course, this is the answer. She's mega LS sussy. It could only have been you, Dahlia Hawthorne. How how can you The defense grasping at straws? Ten minutes passed between the time the cable broke and the time of the electrocution. What exactly were you doing that whole time, Miss Hawthorne? Were you really listening to some music while cheering them both on as they fought? I find it hard to believe that you didn't lift a finger to stop the men dearest to you. Let her cook! <laughs> order! Order! Miss Faye! What? I mean, why? That is to say... Miss Hawthorne, I believe you did witness the two men fighting on that day. However, after Mr. Wright pushed the victim and subsequently left the scene, it was you who pushed Mr. Swallow to his death by your very own hands. Hell yeah, here we go. Oh no, she's gonna- oh no. Oh, victim card time. <laughs> How can you say something so mean, Madame Faye? I- I didn't do anything. 
Judge, no, no, judge. Your Honor, please! I have something I want to say. You! What is it? Please. Please strike everything the defense said just now from the record. Bruh? What the? Are you daft? You're totally wrong, Miss Faye. Dolly. She... Oh god. Everybody's simping for her now. Not just the judge. Not just... It it's a three combo. <laughs> she couldn't do something like that. Mr. Wright, get back into your seat. <laughs> Bailiff, grab that man. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. Leave my dolly alone. Achoo! Ah, that boy. He's gotten himself in way over his head. Oh, Mr. Grosberg, you're back. It seems I've arrived just in the nick of time. I found the police report on that incident in your newspaper clipping. Nice. Thank you so much. This is exactly what I was hoping for. You'd better take a good look at it. Actually, let's do that. Just briefly. Oh, shit. Incident overview. Location, District Courthouse Cafeteria. Date slash time, August 27, 4 p.m. Victim, Diego Armando, age 28. Occupation, lawyer. Suspect, Dahlia Hawthorne, age 19. Details. Armando ingested uh, poison while interviewing the suspect regarding another case. Traces of poison were found in the victim's coffee cup. No poison was found in the vi vicinity or on the suspect's person. It is unclear how the poison entered the victim's coffee cup. It, uh, details how you came to lose your boyfriend. Now then, the defense has made a very serious accusation. Mr. Payne, what do you have to say about this? Well, really, Your Honor, I, uh, the... May I interrupt you for just a moment, Mr. Prosecutor? Ah, don't you worry, my dear. I have the situation well in hand. Oh, no. Go right ahead. <laughs> Madam Fay, are you seriously accusing me of killing my sweet doggy? Yes, I am. Not only am I saying you murdered Dog Swallow, but you also tried to pin the whole thing on your current lover, Phoenix Wright. <laughs> coffee, sad catch up. <laughs> uh, I want some coffee, I really do. I told you that you should let me handle this. Weep. Sorry, please go on ahead. How can you say that? I'm absolutely devoted to my dear Feeny. The notion that I would try to frame him is ludicrous. This is all just too much for poor little me to bear. I believe the girl is trying to ask what on earth her motive would be. The answer to that lies somewhere in this police report. It must. Eight months ago, an incident occurred in the basement cafeteria of this building. And then, that same day, the two of them accidentally meet. Your Honor, the defense requests further testimony from Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. Further testimony? What about? About the events of the day when she first met the defendant, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Poison coffee. <laughs> God jam. Ah, I love I love some poisoned coffee in the morning. Nothing better to wake you up, if you know what I mean. What could that possibly have to do with this case? Objection! The witness claims that she has no reason to frame the defendant, am I correct? Well, I have evidence that suggests that she, in fact, had a very good reason. Very well, then. The court grants the defense's request. Young lady, would you mind staying on just for just a bit longer? Of course not, Mr. Judge. Get ready for the battle of your life, Dahlia Hawthorne. <laughs> I first met my darling Feeny eight months ago. They drank the expired coffee creamer from Leon's fridge. <laughs> oh my god. It's like we were destined to meet in this very courthouse's basement reading room. 
I heard you can only drink poisoned coffee once. What? No way. Ah, why? The moment our eyes met, my heart skipped a beat. We've been going out ever since that fateful day. We're so lovey-wovey, we literally make people sick. It's just jealousy, I think. Phoenix, we didn't ask. Mr. Wright, do that again and you will be held <laughs> in contempt of court. I love how much leeway he's giving uh, Dahlia, but whenever Phoenix talks, he's like, Okay, you little shit, sit down. <laughs> and now we enter the final act of our little drama. As we used to say in the days of my youth, Go get her. It's like we were destined to meet in the... Yeah, okay. The courthouse's reading room. That's a strange place to meet the love of your life. That's not true, Madame Fay. After all, Feeney was... He was not only an art student, but he was also planning to become a lawyer. I'm not talking about him, I'm talking about you, Miss Hawthorne. What was a lit literature a li I can't fucking... What was a literature student? There we go. Like you, doing in a courthouse reading room. This line of questioning is a waste of time. No, it, it's not. Shut the fuck up, Payne. Miss Faye, I'm warning you. If this has nothing to do with, this, with the current case... No, we keep pressing. Your Honor, if you'll allow me to some latitude, I think I can establish relevance. Please ask her to continue on with her testimony. Very well. Got a simple question for you, young lady. What were you doing in the... reading room? I had come to this courthouse to do some research for a paper I was writing. Oh, yeah? Actually, wait. I call bullshit, Dahlia. Miss Hawthorne, you weren't here because of your research paper, were you? Didn't you actually come here for a much more important reason? <laughs> what is the meaning of that cocky smile on your face, Miss Faye? Eight months ago. Right here in this very courthouse, there was another tragedy. Another tragedy? Do you mean the incident in which an attorney was poisoned? The name of the su suspect in that incident is listed here in this report. And that name is Dahlia Hawthorne. What? Dahlia Hawthorne? Yes, the sweetie pie of everyone's eye, Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. She was the prime suspect in a criminal case just eight months ago. Order! 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 This is unbelievable. It's true then. The loveliest rose can hide the... Miss Faye, that's not fair. You can't slander my witness with an unrelated case. Payne, shut up. I, Winston Payne, will not allow it. Mr. Prosecutor, I believe I was speaking. Oh, no. <laughs> it's true that about eight months ago, the police expressed some interest in me. Expressed some interest, huh? <coughs> ah. Mr. Judge, sir. I know I'm under oath, so I'll tell you the absolute truth. I did not commit the crime that occurred during that incident eight months ago. I see. Okay, I've tied the two crimes together. Now I just gotta stay on the on the offensive. Well done, Mia. Oh, you've really lit a fire in my heart and my buttocks. I can hardly tell which is more inflamed, my spirit or my ass. The poisoning. I met the lawyer who was poisoned to discuss something in the cafeteria that day. I left my seat for just a moment and then that's when it happened. From what I heard, it was a liquid poison that is lethal at just two teaspoons. Not only that, I heard it was a very special kind of poison. So you see, I'm innocent. I wouldn't even know where to get a poison like that. Oh yeah? So that's what happened here eight months ago. However, as you've heard from the witness's testimony, she had nothing to do with it. I think the defense is just about out of tricks. I am terribly sorry, Mr. Payne. But I'm afraid the defense has many more tricks up its sleeve today. And I'll be sure to show them to you before the end of this cross-examination. 
<laughs> what the? Why does the defense suddenly feel stronger? Aha, Mia! You're glowing with a true liar's aura, my dear. That proud posture and self-confidence, absolutely smashing. Yeah, the judge is always like, don't you try to out-simp me, Phoenix. Okay. I wouldn't even know where to get poison like that. Oh, yeah? Addiction. Let's see about that. You wouldn't know how to get that kind of poison. I don't believe you. Lawyer maxing. If you guys don't mind me asking, where did the whole maxing meme start from? I've been hearing it a lot. Lurk maxing. Attorney maxing. Leon maxing. <laughs> like, <laughs> I get what it means, but... What? In fact, you had easy access to that kind of poison, didn't you? At your boyfriend's lab. Boyfriend? You mean the victim, Doug Swallow? That's right. Up until eight months ago, Miss Hawthorne was dating Mr. Swallow. And if you recall, Mr. Swallow was a pharmacology student at Ivy University. Look, Maxing. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh... I need to do a stream one day where uh, I go through, like, how to become an Alpha Sigma male. Um, and then, you know, just watch the subs come in. Just, like, just from 96k subs to a million. Right, guys? <laughs> okay, I'm sorry for joking about that. I uh... <clears throat> Pharmacology is laboratory contained highly advanced chemistry equipment. In fact, without such equipment... The culprit could never have obtained such a rare and special poison. Yeah, tell her! Well, Miss Hawthorne, it seems you had access to such a poison after all. And then it was a matter of slipping, in, uh, slipping it into the victim's coffee when he wasn't looking. Yakuza maxing, yeah. <laughs> the only person who could have done that was the one sitting at his very table. At his very table. You. Got him! Mewing and look maxing and 100%ing Yakuza 5. There you go. The ultimate person. That's nothing but a baseless. May I say something, Madame Faye? No, shut the fuck up. What is it, Miss Hawthorne? The amount of poison in the coffee was two teaspoons, correct? In order to carry that much liquid, you would need some kind of container. Well, yes, that is true. I was searched immediately after the incident took place. Quite true. In fact, the entire courthouse was turned upside down. But they didn't find a suspicious container anywhere, did they? She's right. They even mentioned that in the report. Uh, I see, Baba. Well, he could have easily gotten rid of something like something that small. Uh, excuse me, madame, but this is a court of law. If you're saying I threw the poison container away, I think you need to show some kind of proof. Proof? She got me good at that. Provide some evidence, or I'll have to disallow this line of questioning, Miss Faye. The judge is mewing right now. And uh, Dahlia is, uh, defendant Maxim. But I am attorney Maxim, so it's all good. Unless we can come up with some evidence, we're gonna lose this lead. The police conducted the full body search of Dahlia and the entire. and all of the courthouse. And yet the container holding the poison disappeared. But oh, we have that. We have it! Where's the container? Right here, look! You were forced to get rid of the container in a hurry, weren't you? And that's why you passed it on to someone that had nothing to do with the case. Someone that you knew wouldn't be searched. Who is this person? Mr. Phoenix Wright, of course. So the defendant was this witness's accomplice? Of course not. She gave the poison to him, disguised as a present. What? But that's... Uh, that's a charming little necklace. Is this a little bottle? It's really quite cute. Like chat. So what, what about it? What does it mean, Miss Faye? The day that the witness met and fell for Mr. Phoenix White was eight months ago. August 27th. 
the very same day as the poisoning incident. One kid even did a surgery at home by himself. Wait, what? No fucking way. No fucking way that went well. In fact, oh my god. <laughs> you know what? This actually makes me think of something not really related, but um... What was the what was the surgery called in English? Uh, th there's a guy that I saw in university. Okay, like I, he, I think he was with me in one class, um, but but like he didn't really attend that often. But you know he was with me, and I sometimes you know would see him around. He had a surgery that um, do you guys say like you know shrinking the stomach? Uh, th that kind of surgery. He had that, and sometime after, he felt like his stomach kind of in pain. Um, he went to them, and he was like, you know, telling them about this symptom, and they were like, oh, don't worry about it. It's just like, it's like a, a symptom post surgery. The guy lost his life. It's actually insane. It's just, you know, there's always that feeling, right? Like when someone you kind of know about, but also you're not super familiar with, just out of nowhere, someone like comes up to you and they're like, yo, do you remember this guy? He passed away. There's always that like very strange feeling. Um, and yeah, this was no different really. It's just really sad. Liposunction, thank you. Yeah, I, uh, I, I'm bad with terminology sometimes. Um, liposunction, I guess. Yeah, um, it didn't work out very well. And it's just a shame, because, again, I don't know the guy, but he wasn't, like... I I'm way fatter than him. So, I don't know, maybe he was having other issues. So, it's just a shame, man. It really is. Anyway, enough of that depressing talk. Let's get into some other kind of depressing talk, uh, which is the game and the case and, you know... Oh, oh, thank you, yeah, the gastric band, yeah, 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 there is a band involved, yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you. Uh, yeah, Claus. Under the pretense of love, the witness gave my client a present. All for the purpose of hiding that one piece of evidence that would give her away. What? Are you saying there's a deadly poison in here? No, there's no longer any poison in that bottle. However, I'm certain that if the crime lab were to analyze it, they would find a trace amount. Order. Order in the court. Uh-oh. On behalf of Dolly, I object. Damn, that, that sounds horrible, Bubba. Sorry about that. Yeah, um... I won't let you bully her like this. Mr. Wright, I thought I told you to stay in your seat. Mr. Wright, why? Why are you going through so much trouble to protect her? Guys, why do men do this? Any guesses? I'm willing to hear them out. Chat is willing to hear them out. Why do men do this? Why? You know? One of life's greatest mysteries. Why do they do this? Why? Because... Because I'm a... I'm madly in love with her. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Madly in love? I haven't heard anyone say that in a long time. Mr. Wright. Have you ever thought about this? Why exactly would a woman like Dolly Hawthorne want to date you? Oh. <laughs> okay, that, that sounds a little mean if you read it in a certain way. Why would a woman like Dolly uh, want to date you anyway? Well, I guess you must be madly in love with me too. Mr. Wright, please open your eyes, you fucking... At this point in the trial, I think it should be obvious to everyone. The real reason that Dahlia Hawthorne is dating you is... 
Because of that necklace. Dahlia Hawthorne was not, and is not, madly in love with you. Yeah, Baba. The only thing she's after is that bottle necklace you love to wear around your neck. M my necklace? Back there in the waiting room, you said it yourself. Yeah, but she's so shy. Every time I see her, she's like... Please give it back now. You know, j just things that shy people say. For Dahlia Hawthorne, that necklace is irrefutable evidence of a crime. That's why she absolutely had to get it back. You're lying. But you never gave it back to her. And to make things worse for you, you, insist th you insisted on showing it to everyone you meet. Met. Yeah, shy people usually ask for, like, the poison container to be given back. You know. I see it all the time. I don't know about you. That's why she... I don't... I don't believe you. That's a lie. Where? <laughs> oh no. What did he do? Mia! Are you alright? The defendant, he's getting away. Bailiff, hurry! After him! Mia! Mia, are you alright? Yes, I think so. That boy, he went completely insane. The power of simping, guys, right here. <laughs> where, Where is Mr. Wright? Looks like the bailiff caught him, so he should be back soon enough. Thank goodness. Oh no. What is it? The bottle necklace. The present. It's gone. Oh god. That's ter terrible. Mr. Wright must have grabbed it when he slammed into me. Foolish boy. That's the only thing that could have saved him. What in the blazes are we supposed to do now? I know, right, Stefano? <laughs> Mr. Wright. Not just one Von Karma, two Von Karmas, even. This sort of a behavior is unprecedented in the history of this court. I'm sorry. I'm afraid that your apology is not enough. Yeah, tell him. Mr. Wright. What did you do with the bottle necklace? Forgive me. It's okay, just give, give back the necklace. I ate it. You did what, you little... You... <laughs> you what? <laughs> you... You ate it? It was too big to swallow, so I had to chew it into... How the... How do you do that without your teeth, like... Being permanently damaged. What the? What is he doing now? Your Honor, you've got to stop the trial. Mr. Wright, Mr. Wright, are you feeling okay? Does your stomach hurt? The bottle you swallowed may have had some poison left in it. You fucking idiot! Ah. Uh. Yeah, metal and glass. Yeah, see, glass, yeah, maybe he could have chewed on, but... <laughs> like, <laughs> come on. <laughs> it seems the defendant has proven the prosecution's case for us. Clearly, that bottle did not contain a deadly poison. How can he be so sure? I mean, didn't, didn't she just say that? Like, the poison is gone, but there could be traces. As you can see, the defendant is still very much alive. As for the poison, more like a fledgling defense attorney's overactive imagination. So it would seem. Uh, no, there must be some mistake. The bottle must not have any. Uh, the bottle must not have had any poison left in it. Either that, or the poison must have lost its potency. There, there. It's all right, rookie. Trusting your client is the most noble thing a defense attorney can do. And it's heartwarming to see that you placed this much faith in Mr. Wright. But that's how it is for us on the prosecution side, too. For example, I would trust the witness, Miss Hawthorne, with my very life. Now that sounds like a simp. 
Which is why I can say that your assessment of her is completely wrong. That's enough. Unfortunately, Miss Faye, I cannot accept your explanation of the events. But why? This may be impossible for a beginner like you to understand. But in a court of law, evidence is everything. Even I... Even after I proved so much, is she gonna get away with everything? Well, now that the suspicion surrounding Miss Hawthorne has been cleared up, I would like to... Mr. Wright? I'm sorry, Miss Faye. It totally slipped my mind. I'm really sorry. I know you believed in me, and I feel like I really let you down. Yes, you did. Mr. Wright, what are you trying to say? Uh, there's something I forgot to tell you. What is it? That day, the day I met Dog Swallow... Yes, we, we saw this scene already. Shut the fuck up, Judge. You believe Dahlia with no evidence, yeah. <laughs> I think there's an extension here, actually. Last night, someone stole some poison from our lab. <laughs> Uh-oh. Poison? The same thing happened eight months ago. A drug sample was stolen. She came to the lab that time, too. It could only have been her. That girl is a thief. Stop it. Is it true? Did he really say that? That's ridiculous. There's one more thing. After I pushed him that day, I got worried and came back to have a look. And she was there. Dolly was right there. Okay, you know, th this kind of makes me think. If he did see her there, how did this go over the police? You know what I mean? I guess maybe they all agree. Like, Dolly and Phoenix both agreed that Phoenix would... No, wait. How did she... How did this... How? Because I think earlier they said students saw Phoenix at the scene or something like that, and they reported that. But why did they report Dahlia? Did she make all of them, like, you know, not mention that? I, I doubt it. Maybe there's something I'm forgetting, but... She was crouched down next to him. What? She told me not to ever tell anyone about it, but... I'm sorry, Dolly. Your Honor, this is... The defendant is... Miss Faye, you tell them. Dolly didn't do it. She's innocent. Didn't Dolly call the police? Oh, wait, wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. See, this is the good thing about streaming a game. Chat, if I don't pay attention, chat does. <laughs> Sometimes. So Dolly is still poisoned eight months ago, too, huh? If you put that together with Mr. Wright's testimony, then there's only one possible conclusion. The defense believes that Miss Hawthorne stole some poison on the night before she killed Doug Swallow. The night before? Naturally, her motive was steal for stealing it was to kill someone. Miss Faye. If you're so certain of your theory, then let me ask you this. Mia, this is your last chance. Think carefully now. There's something that she desperately wanted to get back. Therefore, who was Miss Dolly Hawthorne planning to kill? Imagine a timeline where she succeeded. We would have no ace attorney, <laughs> I guess. There was one person that was standing squarely in Miss Dahlia Hawthorne's way. And that person was Mr. Phoenix Wright. Me? Your Honor, my client is only human after all. Don't put the blame on him. After all, it was Doug Swallow that was murdered. Well, it's true that that's how things worked out. But, let's remember that Mr. Swallow died of electrocution, not poison. The person that Miss Hawthorne was planning to poison was, in fact... You, Phoenix Wright. There's no one else that it could be. But how can that be? I thought they were in love. Poor Mr. Wright, this must be killing him. Hang in there. I'll bring her to justice. I swear it. 
As I said before, the only thing Miss Hawthorne truly cared about was... The one piece of evidence linking her to that incident eight months ago. That's right, the bottle necklace. That's all she cared about. But even so, why? Why would she go so far as to murder him? Because she's a... Never mind. Eight months ago, just after the fall of that attorney in the basement, cafeter uh, in the basement cafeteria, Dahlia Hawthorne could think of only one thing. How to get rid of the bottle necklace as quickly as possible. No. It can't be. It was a pretty good move she made, too. The evidence was missing for a long time. But there was just one big problem. Although she got him to hide the evidence, Mr. Wright refused to return it to her. To him, the tiny little bottle was a cherished treasure. The judge has gone to simp levels we never thought possible. Yeah. <laughs> uh... Yeah, close. Uh, I didn't play Spirit of Justice yet, no, actually. But it's good to hear that you like it. Hello, Pizza Plays. I'm good, how are you? He even showed it to everyone he met. You mean, that's why she tried to kill him? Correct, Your Honor. It was to retrieve that piece of evidence. That can't be true. Wah. Feeny, what a joke you are. Uh-oh, there's the real her. Honestly, how can any woman ever count on you for anything? I even told you time and time again to keep your trap shut about me and that necklace. You disgust me. Miss Hawthorne! It appears that we're nearing the end of this trial. Fine, I can tell you plan on making me into a criminal, no matter what I say. You are a criminal, Miss Hawthorne. We'll see about that. But first, where's your evidence? It seems your sniveling little crybaby of a client has eaten that bottle as a snack. Well... She was evil the whole time, I know, right? Old man. Hey, old man, are you senile or something? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> this is the wake-up call for the judge. You, you would think he's seen it all, but I guess not. Why don't you say something instead of sitting there with, the, with that dumb look on your face? <laughs> What's happened to you, Miss Hawthorne? Are you really that shocked? Or do you prefer me? This way, Mr. Judge. <laughs> oh, my God. It is actually satisfying, though, seeing him get a taste of his medicine. With absolutely no proof, he treat a voluntary witness like she's a mass murderer. Well, I have nothing more to say. I'll be heading home now, if you don't mind. But we're not finished. Fine, then ask this nasty old hag to finish up already. I can't let her get away this time. Stop, Mia. If you keep on pushing without any evidence... He could pay the ultimate price as the lawyer. As a lawyer, the ultimate price. You'll be forced to take off your attorney's badge forever, I'm afraid. Uh oh. You better think it over carefully, Miss Fay, or should I say, Miss Gray? Not funny. Well, Miss Fay, can you provide evidence that would establish her guilt once and for all? Wait, did you send a super chat clause? Or maybe just didn't go through it. Where is the break when you need one? <laughs> if I mess up here, my career as a lawyer is over. But to be honest, at this point, I don't have any evidence that's well-founded. Even so, I'd rather lose my attorney's badge than let her get away with murder. Go, Mia. Your Honor, the defense would like to present proof. Impossible! You can't possibly... Stupid woman. It is the opinion of the court that there has been enough discussion already. Therefore, I will only allow one piece of evidence to be presented. Just one? If you are unable to establish her guilt, then I'm afraid that a very harsh verdict will immediately be handed down on Mr. Wright. I understand, Your Honor. I can Im just imagine the headlines for tomorrow's newspaper. 
up-and-coming liar plummets to earth before she gets the chance to soar. She was planning to poison Mr. Wright. If that's the case, then the poison was probably in there. In there. There. The bottle. Here it is, Your Honor. The evidence that will prove her guilt once and for all. Cold Killer X. Phoenix Wright's beloved cold medicine. Look at him laughing. Does our rookie defense attorney have a bit of a cold? If I did, I still wouldn't take this cold medicine. After all, it's been poisoned. What? Remember what the defendant said in his testimony. But I lost my bottle of it around lunchtime on the day of the accident. I always eat with Dolly, just the two of us. Yeah, here we come. Uh, she was the one who took the... She was, she was the one who took his bottle of Cold Killer Rex. Then she poisoned it, knowing that Mr. White was gonna take some. Now you're really grasping at straws. After all, it was the victim Doug Swallow that was holding the medicine. I would like the court to recall the crime that happened here eight months ago. Where did Miss Hawthorne hide the evidence? Huh? What are you talking about? Eight months ago, the poison was hidden in her bottle necklace. Which she then gave to someone else for safekeeping. Someone she had accidentally went into in the reading room. My client, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Yes, that's right. She did the same thing this time as well. After shoving the victim, Mr. Phoenix Wright left the scene of the crime. Th that is when the murderer, Dahlia Hawthorne, appeared. With her, she was carrying the poison bottle of Cold Killer X. This, of course, was so she could carry out her plan to murder Mr. Wright. I believe she did testify that she was going to meet with the defendants. Yes, and she heard and saw everything that happened at the scene of the crime. Including what the defendant and victim were arguing about and the cut electrical cable. That's when she realized I can't allow Doug Swallow to live. She used the severed electrical cable to silence him forever. Unfortunately for her, this is when the problem occurred. Mr. Wright, who she thought had left the scene, came back to check on the victim. And on top of that, because of the power outage, some students showed up as well. It's hardly any wonder that she was, as she put it, in a state of panic. Recall that she was carrying that bottle of poisoned cold medicine. She must have thought, what if they search me like they did eight months ago? Eight months ago? Yes, she disposed of the evidence exactly the same way as she did back then. She had someone else hold it. In this case, Doug Swallow. I guess you can say, Doug Swallow swallowed the medicine. <laughs> Please don't leave. Oh, come on now, everyone. Surely you aren't fooled, are you? This stupid woman. She's nothing but a filthy, stinking liar. Right, Mr. Prosecutor? Huh? Yes, that's exactly right. It's just pure desperation. Mm, I wonder which one of us is the desperate one. So, Miss Hawthorne, this cold medicine, I wonder if you wouldn't mind taking some. Ooh. Now this is the ultimate Gotham. Well, Mr. Wright ate that necklace of yours, right? Now it's your turn to prove your innocence. What do you say? If I'm just a filthy, stinking liar, then there's no need to worry. So come on, show us. I dare you to take some of this medicine right now. Mia, Faye, Mia! Uh oh. <laughs> do you think you've won? Well, do you, Mia, Faye? She's losing it. That's just fine. For the time being, victory is yours. For the time being. Well, I have a very long memory, you know. You and I will meet again. I'm certain of it. Well then, Mr. Judge, 
I'll see you later too, okay? Huh? Uh, why, uh, yes. I'm gonna go spend a little quality time with the men in blue now. I wish you all the best. Whew. It's finally all over. Pain, stop. I refuse to accept this. The defense hasn't shown a scrap of evidence to support their outrageous claim. Bruh. But even so, your witness seems to have accepted it. I don't care. I'm Winston Payne. And I don't believe one word that this rookie lawyer has said. Well then, Mr. Payne, let me ask you this. Yes. Would you care to try this cold medicine? What? Just a little earlier, I could have sworn you said. There, there. It's alright, rookie. For example, I would trust this witness, Miss Hawthorne, with my very life. He did say that. So, if she's so trustworthy, then I'm sure there's... There couldn't possibly be any poison in here, right? Uh, well, uh... uh and here comes the back pedal. Come on now, rookie killer. Show this rookie how it's done. How much trust do you really have for this woman? <laughs> Are you willing to bet your life? Guys, watch this. <laughs> My beautiful hair, no! And just like that, he's almost bald. <laughs> uh, Mr. Payne, about Dahlia Hawthorne. Yes, Your Honor, I'll file the papers for immediate arrest. Ah, tragic, but not surprising. I knew there was something sussy about her from the very- Shut the fuck up, Judge. Don't lie, just admit you were wrong. By the way, Miss Faye. Yes, Your Honor? Was it just me or did you and Miss Dahlia Hawthorne seem to know each other? Your Honor, whether we did or not has no bearing on this case. Very well. Uh, Mr. Payne. This can't be happening. It's a nightmare. It's like losing to my daughter. <laughs> Get wrecked. It appears Mr. Payne has lost his spirit along with his hair. <laughs> Does the defendant have anything further to say? It can't be true, my my dear. Dolly! Phoenix, she tried to kill you, God, for God's sake. Very well then, I believe I'm ready to pass judgment and bring this trial to an end. The court finds the defendant, Phoenix, right. This court is adjourned. We did it, guys. Case one closed. Mia! You were wonderful in there. Thank you for everything, Mr. Grosberg. During the verdict, I thought my hemorrhoids were going to explode like... <clears throat> Mr. Grosberg, do you maybe think you can stop talking about them? That's rather rude. No, you're rude. This case really made me think. What does it mean to have a relationship with, of mutual trust with the clients? Perhaps it is we veteran lawyers who have lost sight of this. Oh, Mr. Wright, congratulations. Thanks. Uh, you know, I was thinking. Go on. The dolly that I saw up there on the witness stand, I don't think that was really her. Uh, what? Yeah, the dolly I know could never have said any, any of those terrible things. Maybe, maybe she was like, I don't know, a fake or something. Boy, this poor kid still hasn't got a clue. <laughs> you need to forget about her, Mr. Wright, for your own sake. Yeah, you're right. That's probably for the best. Also, you need to relax a bit more. Try to grow up a little. But, out of all my friends, everyone says I'm the most grown up. What kind of company does this guy keep? <laughs> Right now, I am studying to become a lawyer myself. That's what you keep saying. But I thought you were in, art, in the art department. Well, yeah, I am. But there's a friend that I desperately want to help. And if I hurry, then I should be, a, then I should still be able to save him in time. I see. 
say, Miss Faye, a liar is someone who can help people when they're in trouble, right? Mr. Wright, I'm still new to this myself. But I think that's exactly what a lawyer is. Okay, I'm gonna do it. I'll study my butt off. I'll become a lawyer for sure. I think we can also do case two, hopefully. It's been five years since I was acquitted of all charges. I became a lawyer like I planned and managed to save my friend. But Mia has passed on to a better place. For me, this trial brings up a lot of painful memories. Is the Apollo Justice Trilogy on Game Pass? I don't know, actually. But it also brings up some very precious ones. And memories that I thought would never rise to the surface again. Mia's gone now, but even so, I can hear her in my mind. Phoenix, no matter what, always believe in your clients. In a court of law, your greatest weapon is your belief. Five long years. Something has happened that made me think back to her words of wisdom, but that is a story for another day. There was a slight disruption in the background. There was nothing. Don't worry about it. Okay, um, I think we should be able to finish this comfortably by, like, seven hours in, hopefully. And then I'm thinking of doing each case after that in one stream, like, one stream each. Actually, the last one I might split into two. Like, I'm thinking of actually just taking my time with this uh, game. What chapter it is. Didn't someone answer you? Yeah, Kiro said one. So yeah, that was the first case. Okay, um, the time is 1 a.m. Beep, 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 beep. Detective, we made it. Phew, what a relief. Glad the jewel is still safe. Come <gasps> shoe. <laughs> Oh, oh, you said it, pal. Must have been a rock-solid security that scared him off. Would you mind opening the safe just to double-check? Uh-oh, we've been had! Out front. Guards, turn on the searchlights. <laughs> Better luck next time, gentlemen. Oh boy, so it's gonna be this case, huh? Alright, Steph, sleep well, buddy. Excuse me, but I'm afraid they must be leaving now. We shall meet again when the next moon is full. <laughs> Uh -huh. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. This guy really likes to laugh. <laughs> I'm willing to bet Investigations 1's final case would take three streams. I need to look it up. Um. Maya. Hey, Nick. Get a load of this. Okay, um, before we continue, I gotta drink some water. You guys hydrate as well. I might actually order something. Maybe. Or maybe not. Well, we'll see. Okay, drink water, okay? We'll be back. In the meantime, you can uh, you can hang out with chair.
Are you having anything right now? Tea, coffee, water, anything? you say we continue? Hey, Nick, got a load of this. Are you listening to me? He can clean the toilet later. This is important. What are you freaking out about now? Today will be the last time you talk to me that way. We're about to hit the big time. Big time? What do you mean by we? You don't mean you and me are... Huh, don't be silly. I'm talking about me and Pearly, of course. Hello, it's a pleasure to see you again, Mr. Nick. Pearls, you haven't changed a bit. Wait, what are you doing here anyway? Haven't you heard, Mr. Nick? Here, take a look at this. What's this? Some kind of poster? Treasure Exhibition. The Sacred Urn. Karain Village. Karain Village, isn't that... That's right, it's our hometown. Pearly and mine, that is. What's this about treasures from the boonies? Very funny, you can laugh all you want. But you'll be singing another tune tonight. Tonight? What about tonight? The treasures of Korean exhibit doesn't actually start until next week, but... The promoter sent us some special VIP entry passes. That's why I dressed up extra special today. What do you think, Nick? Same Maya, different day. Yeah, that poor urn. <laughs> this young lady here is Maya Faye. The younger sister of Mia Faye, my friend and mentor. I first met her two years ago. I was working on the case surrounding Mia's death, and ever since then... I've been the one who's been keeping this law office afloat from behind the scenes, says Maya. Actually, that's just a cover for her true identity. In reality, she's a spirit medium and a bit of a shady character. Hey, who are you calling shady? <laughs> and this little girl is Pearl Fay, but I usually call her Pearls. Chat, is Apollo Justice worth playing? Yes, in my opinion. Um, Apollo Justice is one of my favorite games, like the fourth game, specifically. She's Maya's cousin and a spirit medium in spirit training. Wait, did I say spirit medium in spirit training? Spirit medium in training, herself. I know I'm a bit young, but I want to help in any way I can, Mr. Nick. Now that I think about it, Phoenix had like 14 cases in two years. Bro is overworked. I don't know. Like, I don't know what's the normal amount of work for lawyers, honestly. Because, like, these cases end in, in uh, three days, maximum. Uh -huh. Actually, not three days, but, like, six days? Yeah, if you count the investigations, six days. <sighs> Korean Village is the home of the mysterious Korean channeling te technique. And Maya here is the daughter of the Korean School of Channeling's master. Has Phoenix ever been paid at all? Good question. I know it sounds ridiculous, but it's no joke. I've seen her power with my own eyes. It's the real thing, alright? Earth to Nick, how long are you gonna make two gorgeous women like us wait? Yes, Mr. Nick, I can't wait any longer. I want to see the exhibit. <sighs> Looks like I don't get a choice here. Might as well head on out. Let's do this. Actually, they'll do it for me. Mm hmm. Wait, hold on. Okay. Lordly Taylor, the city's fanciest and most expensive department store. Treasure exhibit, huh? I have to admit, I'm pretty impressed. Yeah, Ruby. Yeah, Fabio. <laughs> um, 
like from what they tell us here and also in real life like in Japan defense attorneys almost never win and in this game apparently they don't get paid much meanwhile if you're a prosecutor uh, it's very easy for you to win and you get paid the big bucks so like why become a defense attorney Wow this is awesome yeah you can make even the cheapest junk look great it all depend depends on how you display it. Oh, they even have the dusty old hanging scroll that was in the Fey Manor storeroom. Oh yeah, I remember this scribbling on it when I was a little girl. On a family heirloom? Say, Nick, the person in charge of this ex ex exhibition is waiting for us in the basement warehouse. Alright, I guess we should go say hello. Here we are. Yep, this is a basement warehouse, all right? Exactly my thoughts. This place is scary. I feel like a monster could jump out at any time. Don't be scared, Pearly. I'll protect you. Oh, Mr. Wright. <laughs> a monster! You were right! Huh? A monster? Look who it is! Good evening. It's good to see you again. You? I know you. Nice to see you again, too, little miss. Oh, hello. Is she a friend of yours, Nick? And how do you know her, Pearly? Adrian, my beloved, yeah. Nice to meet you. I'm Adrian Andrews. I'm in charge of the promotion and planning for this treasure exhib exhibit. I'm also responsible for the security arrangements. Oh, uh, nice to meet you. I love how Maya, like, whenever she meets new people... All of her, like, quirky personality just vanishes. She becomes polite as hell. <laughs> Adrian sure has changed since we last met. So, this is the this is the warehouse. The really valuable exhibit items are still stored away in here. Uh, thank you, Leafy. Thank you, buddy. Really appreciate it. Um... It really has been a long time, hasn't it, Mr. Wright? Nick, what's going on? Who is this woman? Why are you freaking out on me? What? I just thought it would be more dramatic if I got all worked up, that's all. Mystic Maya, you shouldn't let him off the hook so easily. Please, Maya, don't say anything that'll needle pearls further. Um... Yeah, Baba. Mr. Wright was there for me when I really needed help. It, it was something that happened seven months ago. You remember, don't you? The Nicholas Samurai case? Not really. I was stuck in a dark wine cellar. Did that escape your memory, Nick? After that, I quit being a manager and started this job. Wow, that's tough. I'm sorry, Miss Andrews. If it wasn't for us... No, don't say that. I'm glad the whole thing happened. Thanks to you and everyone else that was involved, I was able to change my whole life. I really am grateful. Whew, that's a relief. I'm really impressed, Miss Andrews. Handling a huge exhibition like this must be very tiring. Well, Lordly Taylor is celebrating their 200th anniversary this year. The works on display in the main exhibition hall are worthy of the finest museums. Woohoo! Did you hear that, Pearly? The finest museums. Yes, I did. That's really wonderful. So this basement warehouse is pretty well protected, huh? Of course it is. After all, there are some priceless treasures here. The security guards are all very highly trained as well. That sounds good. So, what is it with that face he's making? Yeah, thanks to Edgeworth. Oh my, yeah. <laughs> oh, that was, uh, that was rough. Um. <gasps> look at that thing. Mystic Maya, take a look next to the door. That's Mystic Army, right? Yes, that statue, that's the statue of the woman who invented the Korean channeling technique, Army Fei. The statue is on loan from one of the training halls of the Fey Branch family. 
In fact, it just arrived this morning. What's that creepy looking thing she's holding? Don't ask me, how should I know? Well, you are the future master, right? Maybe so, but this is the first time I've ever seen this statue. That thing is the Karain Shishi... Wait. Shishishito. Right? Three times? Or Shichishito. Or, I, I don't know, man. Okay? The sword. Let's call it the sword. It's a ceremonial sword. It's not a real weapon. So the blade isn't sharp. Oh, fooey. I wanted to cut something. What are you eyeing me for? Oh, look. It's already eight. Have you all eaten yet? Uh, well, actually, I've already made a reservation at the restaurant on the 12th floor. Why don't we all dine together? Ooh, I like the sound of that. Dine. It sounds so fancy. Da -da. Nice, Crimson. What do you think of it? I'll have the kids lunch. Ha, huh, apparently it's dinner, not lunch. Why don't you go for it and really eat your fill with a kid's dinner? Okay, in that case, one kid's dinner for me. Shall we head upstairs then? I gotta say, this is really nice of Adrian. Like inviting them here, VIP tickets, and also being a dinner, my treat. After that pleasant evening, all that re remained was to wait for the exhibition's opening. It was wonderful seeing Miss Andrews looking so happy. None of us could have imagined that the very next day something terrible would happen. Sleep well, buddy. Hello, Mohammed. Nick, this is terrible. What the? You're cleaning the toilet again? I never knew you were such a toilet freak. <laughs> hey, maybe one of you two made the big stink, okay? Give me a break, would you? My brain just hit the snooze button for the fifth time. Uh, I'm gonna turn on the TV. خلصت يا كوزا زيرو مبروك شرايك فيها We've got an update on the recent treasure heist Based on clues found at the scene of the crime Authorities have announced That they believe it was the work of the renowned phantom thief Mask the Mask M Mask the Mask According to the spokesperson, Lordly Taylor received a threat letter some days ago. This is the fifth heist by this phantom thief, who only targets rare treasures. Lord... what? Well, Nick, what are you gonna do? Don't you dare go back to scrubbing the toilet. Treasure? Lordly Taylor? You don't think... Yes, now get up, Nick. It was stolen by Mask the Mask. Our most valuable treasure. The Korean sacred urn was stolen. What? Well, we gotta do something about that, don't we? Nice, Muhammad. Refresh my memory a little. What's the sacred urn? Phantom Thieves? What is this, Persona 5? Maybe. It's only the most important treasure in Karain Village, that's all. Look, it's right there on this poster. You know, all this, like, Arabic talk made me think of, like, people, you know, telling me, Hey, Leon, stream, you know, full Arabic stream. And I did see one streamer do that. Like, he's, uh, his native language is uh, Spanish. And he did a full stream once in Spanish. But, like... I also feel like it's gonna be the kind of stream where people tune in for like two minutes, haha, <laughs> funny Arabic, and then they leave. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know if it's gonna be entertaining to watch, you know what I mean? Don't you remember what's inside? The urn contains a very important soul. Namely, the soul of Mystic Ami Fei, the founder of the Korean channeling technique. Well, yeah, but it was broken. Right, Pearly? Uh oh. Yes, that's right. Hold up. I thought that urn had the name Ami written on it. Now it says I am. Uh, any idea how that happened, Pearly? Huh? Uh, well. 
There are some things. There are some things best left unsolved. What'd you, what'd you say, Mr. Nick? I am. That's right. One year ago, there was. Man, it's been a year, huh? There was a murder in Karain Village, Maya's hometown. The sacred urn. It turned out to be an important clue in that case. Ah, uh, me being like, stop breaking my house, you kids. <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, it was terrible. I was arrested and everything. One year ago, the murder in Karain Village. A little bit of a recap. A man was killed during one of Maya's spirit channelings. And this urn wound up being the key piece of evidence that proved their innocence. Uh, Mr. Nick? Would you mind t not telling Mystic Maya about that? You promised, remember? You said you wouldn't tell anyone I broke the urn. Oh yeah, that's right. Now I remember. This urn used to say Ami on it. Until... <laughs> until Pearls accidentally broke it into a million pieces. She tried to secretly fix it. Let's just, let's just say it didn't work out so well. Selby in the Kmatiga Telab. A new game plus. And Khalas. The Vertical Shave Kiryu Majma. A Hawaii Sir new game plus. Like a Maisar ala legend. Hasabi de Vakira. Mm. Yeah, Baba. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not so good at arts and crafts spelling either. Anyway, this is how their gluing project turned out. She put the pieces back together wrong, and now it says Ami instead of... Uh, wait. It says I am instead of Ami. Look at her go. I can't believe no one's noticed this until now. A whole year later. I can't believe it myself. Uh, okay, the toilet is shinier than the judge's head. <laughs> so let's see what's next. What's wrong with you, Nick? What do you mean? What do you mean? What? Nick, Mr. Nick! Your beloved Mystic Maya's treasure has been stolen. Doesn't that even bother you? But I thought the urn was the village's treasure, so I don't see how... The village is Mystic Maya. She's the future master of the Grain School of Channeling. You know what I'm talking about, Mr. Nick. I won't let you say you don't. Okay, okay, I do. So what am I supposed to do about it? Isn't it obvious? Go and find the bad guy who did this. Yeah. And get the sacred urn back. But I'm not... This has nothing to do with that. If you're a real gentleman, you would go find it for your beloved Mystic Maya. Man, oh man. There's no winning against Pearl's fairy tale image of love. So what's the name of the bad guy again? Mask the Mask Nick. Let's go there. Right, let's see if we can find some clues that might lead us to the bad guy. But it doesn't look like anything's been disturbed. Yeah, it looks pretty much the same as it did last night. Uh, bad guy, huh? Hey, you can't poke around here, pal. Wait a minute, that voice. Oh no, not him again. It's you, and I'm the one who should be saying not again. Why is it that every time something bad happens, you always show up, pal? I should be asking you that. Aren't there any other detectives? No, I should be asking you that. So what are you doing here? Uh, what are you doing hanging around here? عادي إذا ودك تكتب عربي يعني أصعب لك أو مثلاً في شيء ما تقدر توصفه عادي تكلم عربي ما في مشكلة خذ راحتك يعني. Hey, I asked you first. Why are you here? All right, all right, we got it. Why don't you two kiss and make up already? <laughs> uh, hello, it's been a long time, Mr. Scruffy Detective. Oh, it's you, little Missy. Uh, actually, my name is Gumshoe, Detective Dick Gumshoe. Now is a good chance for you to try to remember it right. 
And if it's too long for you, you can just call him Dick. No. <laughs> okay. It's good to see you again, Mr. Detective Dick. Uh, yeah. Good to see you again, too, I guess. Mr. Detective Dick, can you tell us what happened? Oh, you're trying to remember my name, Atta Girl. Uh, it's Gumshoe, okay? Anyway, the thief stole something called the Sacred Urn. I know about that. Oh, well, the criminal's name is Mask the Mask. I know about that too. Detective, can't you tell us something other than that? Well, I guess I sort of kind of owe you guys, in a way. The crime occurred last night at around 1.30 in the morning. Come sure, come back. How exactly do you know that? We got an emergency phone call from a guard at the scene of the crime, pal. He said the urn was just stolen. The scene of the crime, you mean here, right? Wrong. That, that urn was being kept under, under careful guard in the basement warehouse. Basement warehouse, huh? So who was guarding the basement warehouse? That guy! It's all his fault that the thief got away, pal. He solves one case and gets a swelled head, thinking that he's an ace detective. Ace detective? Hey, Detective Gumshoe, about this mask the mask. Is he famous? What? You're joking, right, Nick? Mask the mask is the hottest thing since sliced bread. Sometimes he appears as a museum guard. Sometimes he appears as a brown bear known to surprise unsuspecting victims. But underneath those disguises is the true mask the mask. It's just a storm, dick. Sit down. <laughs> Man, I love that map. So he's some kind of master of disguise, huh? And he only goes after the finest works of art, pal. Last night was his fifth heist. If Lordly Taylor only had had only cooperated, I could have caught him this time. What? Then you knew he was planning on stealing the sacred urn? Of course I did. The guy always sends his calling card before he steals something. Calling card, huh? They mentioned that on TV. So why do you call him an ace detective anyway? Uh, that's what he calls himself, pal. I didn't make it up. So, what's he like? Well, like I told you, Mask the Mask has made five highs so far. On the fourth heist, Mr. Ace Detective managed to get the stolen treasure back. Wow, that is impressive. All by himself? Yeah, gotta admit it, pal. Maybe he really is as good as he says. Every time the thief sends one of his calling cards, we send our men on a stakeout. But none of us have ever... ever got... wait. None of us has ever gotten so much as a glimpse of the guy. But Mr. Ace Detective was able to retrieve the stolen treasure from the thief. Anyway, he's at the scene of the crime right now, looking for clues. So he's down at the basement warehouse, huh? So what's this calling card? Here it is. But don't show it to anyone. It's top secret, okay, pal? What's this mark on the front? That's Mask the Mask Signature Emblem, pal. You could say it's his mark. Sleep well, Baba. All of his calling cards... Right. They didn't mention that on the news flash. We're withholding that detail from the public for operational reasons. Uh, the only way we can tell if, if a calling card is real or not is by this emblem. What if someone fakes it though? That makes sense. When you get famous, there are always imitators. Uh... Wait! She just told him if you keep it up, you might meet your own copycats later, Phoenix. The foreshadowing. <laughs> just realized. Uh... Okay, let's go to the warehouse. No matter how many times we come here, this place always gives me the chills. That's probably because it's air-conditioned to protect the art pieces, you know. Welcome uh, to my private little banquet of chaos. Huh? What the heck does that mean? New character spotted. 
I'm afraid I have very little to offer, but please, make yourself at home. Uh, who are you anyway? Shh, silence! <laughs> now I see. It's all becoming clear. What do you see? Zvari! The truth has once again been elegantly revealed to me. A lawyer and a spirit medium. Neither very advanced at the trait. Hey! Am I wrong? Yikes! That's scary. How did you know that? How, you say? The universal skeptic would say that how is nothing but a question of why. I am a traveler of both time and space, a swimmer of dreams. What is he talking about? <laughs> Without further ado, let me fulfill what should be the first duty of any gentleman and introduce myself. The name is Atme. Luke Atme, if you know what I mean. Ace Detective. Oh. Uh, hi. Yeah, what is blood yapping about? <laughs> Don't let him intimidate you, Nick. Stand up and show him what you're made of. Uh, the name's right. Phoenix, right. Ace Attorney. A Maya Fay, a spirit medium. And I'm uh, Pearl Fay, a mystic Maya's cousin, and a spirit medium, ace apprentice. Excellent! Well then, shall we begin our little game? Game? Why does the phrase one short of a baker's dozen come to mind with this guy? Mask the Mask's calling card. It's got his emblem printed on it, right? Quite impressive, but I would expect nothing less from my arc rival. Wait, actually, do you say arc rival or arch rival? Fuck! I always... I'm never sure with this one. I'm surprised to see you in possession of such a top secret piece of information. Well, we've got an ace lawyer, an ace spirit medium, and an ace cousin apprentice here. Yes, indeed. I think I could lear learn to like you, my fellow ace professionals. Hey, Ali Khashem. I don't know if I really want this guy to like us, ever. He has a good theme. I like this. Sir Lawyer, please refrain from such crude behavior. Oh, wait, do I need to talk to him? Oh yeah, there we go. Uh, so, are you really as famous as you say? Of course! For a lawyer, you have a rather shocking lack of knowledge about the world. I had no idea anyone was left in the city that had not heard of me. Look at me! I am Mask the Mask's arch enemy. The ace detective look at me. This, at this moment, there are two mighty figures which loom large over this grand city. One embodies the nefarious force of darkness, the other, the angelic cherubs of light. <laughs> Boy, now I'm really lost. What is he saying, Nick? I have been personally on the heels of this villain since his, ver since his first crime. After learning this criminal's patterns, I thwarted his very latest loathsome larceny. I even returned the target of his uh, tyranny, the portrait of Megina, to the crime scene. And I did it all by myself. I took it back from Mask the Mask. Yeah, Star. With my brawny mind and my brilliant muscles. Yeah, they mentioned it on the news in the Great People Around Town segment. They said that the museum gave you an incredible jewel as a reward. Well, compared to the treasure that I retrieved for them, it's not much. So, in the end, the only thing that makes you great is your own self-praise. Oh, tell us about what you know about Mask the Mask, and keep it simple, please. Like about how I devoted my life to thwarting his dastardly deeds. Last night, here in the bowels of the store, we were locked in a most glorious battle. I see. Huh? Hang on a second. You were here last night? Here? 
in Lordly Taylor? Naturally. Wherever the mask goes, you will find at me laying his elegant traps. Elegant traps? More like the mask out elegance to you. Out elegant. Oh, fucking words, man. <laughs> More like the mask out elegance to you, and you made a beautiful getaway. Oh, he made a be beautiful getaway. I can read, I promise. But this time, I allowed him to escape with the illusion of victory. I wonder if I should ask him about what happened last night in more detail. Uh, can you tell us exactly what happened last night? But of course, after all, I always say there should be no secrets between aces. Flattery will get you nowhere, Pinocchio. <laughs> I first received a request for my services 20 days ago. And it was 10 days ago that we received Mask the Mask's calling card. You were hired before the calling card even arrived? Yes, you see, the person who hired me is uh, quite rigorous and thorough. That's Adrian for you. A mere 10 days after hiring me, her worst premonitions were realized. A calling card arrived, right? The original defense bow tag was gonna have this guy's bow tie before they redesigned him into Phoenix. I remember seeing, like, the early artworks, and I might have seen that, but I completely forgot about it. That's insane. Uh, I set a trap for the thief in the warehouse. Waited for him, alone. Alone? But why? Why didn't you go to the police for help? Ridiculous. Why would I seek help from such a singularity? Useless group of... What? What the... <laughs> what the hell is this guy saying? Got a lot of nerve. After all, it was you that let the mask get away. Yo, Carlos. I always operate alone and concealed, out of the sight of others. Corn sealed. Precisely. Even the guards on duty here were unaware of my presence. To fool your enemies, first you must, must fool your friends. It's my own original proverb. No, it's not yours. Anyway, back to what happened last night. As I was saying, I hid here in the warehouse and waited for the thief to arrive. But I swear to you, not a solitary soul came through that entrance. Nevertheless, the sacred urn disappeared. But that's impossible. How could it just disappear? How, you ask? Don't be ridiculous, sir lawyer. If I knew the answer to that, I wouldn't be here. For someone who seriously messed up his own stake out, he's rather full, hims full of himself. When are you planning to start the Project X Zone 2 playthrough? Yeah, I know they're both there, but I don't think that's stable in the emulator, is it? And Nintendo is really, really um, anal about, you know, piracy, so I don't know if I want to take that risk. So you're saying that even though... Uh... Oh, is this a typo? On one, no one came through those doors last night. Our precious urn still somehow vanished from under your nose. That's just not possible. Mm. Well, sir lawyer, I've been told that you are, t you too are pursuing the mysterious thief. Yeah, we're gonna find the sacred urn no matter what we have to do. Excellent. I will trust you. I permit you to take a look around while investigate elsewhere. If perchance you should discover something of value, return them to my off return then to my office. My office of earthly delights, the at me detective agency. Of course. Oh wait. Office of earthly delights? Well then, sir lawyer, if you'll excuse me, I have much to do. Like yapping to someone else. Wait a minute. He's gone. I don't like the idea of doing this guy's work for him. Come on, Nick. Don't worry about it. It's no big deal. Okay. Wow, this is awesome. What did Miss Andrews say it was called again? Yeah, that. It's literally seven branch sword in Japanese. Or so says Miss Andrews. Whoa, it's pretty heavy. 
One hit, seven times the fun. Pretty catchy, huh? I bet it would sell like hotcakes. There's something about that that bothers me. You're really firing on all cylinders today, Curly. The sword. Was the Mystic Army holding it last night? And another thing, the sword wasn't bent last night like it is now. You're right. Awesome, Pearly. I wouldn't expect any less from my little ace apprentice. The sword is bent, so that must mean... Last night, someone used it somehow. I just thought of something. There's a bad luck word for seven? Huh. Maybe Detective Admi smashed Mask the Mask with it. Like this. Oh no. What the heck? What do you think, Pearly? I think it's even more bent than it was before. Oh man, my head. My hair. Bro, Maya, why would you do that? <laughs> um. Hey, Pearly, do you know what this is? It's a computer. A uh, computer? Oh, I've heard of those. It has such a cute name. Oh, I see. Nintendo be like, we would like, we would rather have you pay two hundred dollars for a Pokemon game on eBay instead of putting on, uh, putting it on the Switch store, and don't even think about emulating. Yeah, basically. Looks like this computer is for storing the data from the security camera. When someone comes in or out of the warehouse, the camera takes a photo of them. It's probably the trap that the detective set up. Let's see if we can find the last night's data on this thing. Uh... I had no idea you were so pathetic with high-tech stuff, Nick. Oh, shut up. Managed to print out the camera data anyway. Nice. Looks like the camera only went off once last night. This statue of Mr. Kami is so cool. I want a gold statue of myself. We could put it in the office. Hey, it's Wright and Co. How about the gold statue of me? Uh, Mr. Nick, I'm sorry, but I noticed something strange. What is it? The statue of Mr. Kami. Was this where it was last night? Oh. It was closer to the door. Apparently, this is all we're supposed to see right now, so... Hey, Nick! Your cell phone's ringing. Hello, Phoenix Wright here. Oh ho 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 It's me, Gumshoe. Gumshoe, what is it? What's so funny? I'll tell you what's funny, pal. I finally beat him. I beat Mr. Ace Detective. Finally, this underdog is the alpha dog today. Oh no, <laughs> that stuck-up detective's met his match. Yep, I finally caught him. Lock, stock, and bear. Well, there's no escape for him. You caught him? Are you saying you captured the mask? The mask? Bingo. Well, actually, he surrendered, but I still got him. Mask, the mask, surrendered. Huh. The Alpha, yeah. <laughs> Do you think he can swing by the detention center? He wants to talk to you. Mask the mask, that is. What? He wants to talk to Nick? We can do that. Sigma male gumshoe. Hey pal, welcome to the detention center. You're sure in a ha you sure are in a happy mood, aren't you? Yep, after all, we got masked up right, but uh so where's the sacred urn? Oh, sorry about that, pal. I guess I didn't really think about it before. But you're the victim in this case. 
Huh? Well, I guess I should let you guys hear the story straight from the horse's mouth. You know, he's right, Nick. If you think about it real hard, we are the victims. Well, I guess so, in a way. I'm so used to thinking of the victim as a dead person, because we're always on murder cases. Excuse me. But anyway, I have to get the urn back. Please! Don't just ignore me! Uh... Who are you? I, uh... I'm a... Uh, mask the mask? Okay. Maya not being involved in a case. Impossible. It really is. Hey, Nick. Doesn't he look kind of, well, gangly? What does that mean? I'm Ron the Light. The famous Mask the Mask. I don't think this guy could punch his way out of a wet paper bag. So you're the Mask the Mask guy? Yes, you bet. No, uh, that's wrong. You see, it's complicated. Sort of yes and sort of no, if you know what I mean. Uh, well, when I say wrong, what I really mean to say is it's not right, per se. You see, it's not spelled... M oh, no. Actually, it's... What's with this guy? Well, he's a timid little weak link. We know that much. Don't do that! Don't look at me like that. I don't need your pity. Oh, thank you, Sal. And a major crybaby, too. So why did he give yourself up? Well, you see, it's because... It's because you stole such a priceless treasure. And now you're overwhelmed with guilt, am I right? Uh, priceless treasure. That old, broken urn? I have a little favor to ask. Yes? Could you go and talk to Desi? Desi? Look, we, re we really want our urn back, so where is it? I'm sorry, I'll give it back. I really will. Uh, maybe not. No, I can't. I can't make promises I can't keep. I'll just end up hurting people. Uh, Mr. Nick? I couldn't hear what he just said, especially the last part. Uh, Mr. Damask? Do you think he could speak up a little? Yes, sir. I will. I promise. Uh, maybe not. You see, I'm already speaking in my normal voice, so I can't really do anything. So that's what's up with the text at the end, like changing color. Saijim and Maya have something in common. I wonder what... I wonder! <laughs> oh, yes, the urn! Uh, man, this guy yaps a lot. I lost the urn. What did you just say? You lost it? Oh, my... Dude, just... Ah, my God. <laughs> Those things happen, okay. You're on the train, you get distracted, you forget your bag. You forgot your our urn on the train? You went on the train dressed like that? No, I... I was speaking hypothetically, that's all. Uh, I lost it somewhere, I don't know where. Game theory. Maya is actually Saijima's daughter. <laughs> Are you really sure this creep is Mask? Maya, don't call him a creep. Although I do have to admit, I understand your doubts about this guy. So who is this Desi person? Please don't talk about my wife like that! I guess you must be his wife. Uh, it was my wife that told me to have you all come here. Do you think you could go and visit her at my hideout? Hideout? Mr. Nick, what does he mean by head out? Oh, sorry. Naturally, I meant to say my secret base. Secret base? Well, my apartment actually... My apartment actually. Palazzo Pelopepe. Third floor. Let's go have a look. Uh, something tells me she just likes the sound of the word hideout. Well, I guess we're going there. Yo, Groovy. Good. How are you doing? Wow, check this place out. 
No doubt about it. This is Mask the Mask's hideout, alright? Who is it? Is that you, Ronnie? Huh? Who are you people? Uh, are you Desi... De Delight? That's right, I'm... So wait, how do you pronounce this name? Do you say... I, I want to say it, but I'm, I <laughs> I'm afraid of embarrassing myself. Des Desiree? Desiree? I might just call her Desi, honestly. It's way easier. Desiree? Is that it? Desiree? Oh. Desiree. 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 Okay. Desiree. Okay. Desiree. Desiree. We got it. Desiree. You must be the lawyer and the victim. Yeah, that's us. Your husband told us to stop by and speak to you. I'm Maya Fay, and this is Phoenix Wright. Nikki Boy and Maya, huh? I can't tell you how grateful I am that you decided to help my Ronnie. Well, uh, you're welcome. Did she really call me Nikki Boy? Uh, about your husband. Isn't he the cutest? A bit weak sometimes, though. A bit? By the way, did you know that they mentioned Maya on TV? Really? They said you own the urn and that you're doing some shady training at a law office. Remind me not to watch that channel's news program. Uh, after I saw that, I decided it would be a good idea to meet the lawyer they mentioned. I see. My Ronnie, he has a powerful imagination and gets deluded easily. He kept insisting he was going to surrender to the police. I didn't know what to do. It was me. I stole that urn, he kept saying. As if it was even possible. Uh, you saying he didn't then? Of course he didn't. Why would my Ronnie ever do something like that? Well, you know, it's a priceless treasure. Is it possible he's, his wife doesn't know about secret identity? Maybe he's a fanboy. I don't know. Me? I'm the kind of woman that needs excitement in her life. Oh, excitement, huh? Yes, I'm at my happiest when I'm racing along with my... A uh, bike going at full throttle. Riding a motorcycle is like putting your life on the line, you know what I mean? <laughs> Yo, Hojo, how you doing, buddy? Um, I'm the type that can't stand living a boring, dreary old life with no action. No offense, but your husband, Ron, doesn't exactly look like the risk-taking type himself. You're right about that, he's definitely not one for thrills and danger. But I do have to say that he makes up for it in other ways. Other ways? Yes, money. Ronnie is incredibly rich and super generous. He bought me a bike that's so fast it would make your head spin. And shopping? I like to shop so much it makes Ronnie Ron's head spin. The other day... Okay. Yeah, where does he get the money from? A security guard. They put their lives on the line, right? So they get paid tons of money in return. Tons of it. He's a security guard. I think it's my turn for my head to spin. Why is Phoenix a lawyer? Can you tell us about what happened last night? Uh, 1.30 in the morning. Uh, last night I got pulled over by a policeman. I can't believe he caught up to me. It was a great chase, let me tell you. When he finally caught me, the poor man was as white as a sheet. Mm. It was about 3 in the morning when I finally got home. Sounds like she's got an airtight alibi. What about Mr. Delight? I don't know. We weren't together at, at the time of the night. Uh, when I got home, he was already fast asleep. So basically, he's got no alibi. Okay. Uh, Miss Delight, you must know, right? About your husband and Mask Demask? Of course, I know all about it. My husband is his biggest fan. Yo, Lucy? 
Yeah, I'm good. How are you doing? Biggest fan. Yes, and Ronnie can be pretty delusional sometimes. That's how this whole misunderstanding happened. Wait a minute. Did you say delusional? Yes, that's right. I just don't know what I'm gonna do with him. Ronnie believes that he is Mask the Mask. I'm playing Crash Insane, uh, trying to finish my last year in uni. Stress the unbelief. Oh, I understand how it's like. <laughs> but hang in there. You're almost done. You're at the you're at the finish line now. What are you talking about? So, when did Ron first become Mask the Mask? What are you talking about? He's not Mask the Mask. But wait. Look around this room. The place is obviously Mask the Mask's hideout. No. A real thief's hideout wouldn't look like this. It's because Ron is so timid himself that he looks up to heroic figures. Heroic figures, but Mask is a bad guy. So he's deluded, huh? Well, if he really stole the urn, wouldn't he still have it? Well, I suppose so. Then why don't you ask him if he has the urn or not? Uh... There's something about Ron's behavior that bothers me. Maybe it's true. Maybe Mr. Delight isn't Mask after all. Say, can I ask you something, Nikki boy? What is it? I know, I may, I know I may seem like a bad girl on the outside, but the one thing I won't stand for is illegal activity. Didn't you just race against the police officer? Somebody framed my poor Ronnie. I just know it. Could you give this to Ronnie for me? A letter? Apparently contains something important. Let's give it to him. Well, he is a phantom thief. Oh, that's right. Here, this is from your wife. Actually, more like taken. Okay. My dear Ronnie, how are you? I'm doing fine. He's clutching onto that letter so hard, the ink is gonna be squeezed out. He looks so happy. You should write a letter to Mr. Kamaya too, Mr. Nick. Um, Mr. The lawyer? Yes. In the letter that Desi wrote, she said, Ask the lawyer, the, the guy, to be your lawyer. Uh, could you please take my case? My trial starts tomorrow. Hey, hang on a second. You can't be your lawyer. Why not? What do you mean, why not? We're the victims in this case, right? Well, yeah, but according to Desi, he didn't do it. <laughs> Poor man, he's deluded himself into thinking he did it. She could be lying to protect her husband. Well, that's true. Actually, no. Oh, he's picking up his habits now. <laughs> it's spreading. Please, I'll give you the treasure of your choice in return. Take the case. <laughs> He's a thief, you can't trust him. Well, he may be a thief. But I think there's more to this case than meets the eye. Mr. Nick, I was wrong about you. I shouldn't have trusted you. Pearls? I can't believe you defend this person after what he did to Mr. Kamaya. I'll never forgive you. Ever. Oh no. <laughs> Pearly, wait! This is gonna be ugly. I'll go after her. Uh, sorry about that. I didn't mean to cause any trouble. Well, you couldn't have known she'd react like that. I guess I might as well start investigating. Oh, Maya, where's Pearls? She said she's gonna back. She's gonna go back to the office. Go check in on her later, would you? What about you? Are you okay with me taking the case? Imagine if you could just refuse to take the case and the game would just skip to the third one. Yeah, imagine that. I'm fine, Nick. I believe in you. 
think I'm gonna cry. Uh oh. I don't know, we have a lot of work to do. I really appreciate it. Okay, Nick, let's get this show on the road. Welcome back! Hey, bros, you're back too, I see. I, uh, I went and bought us a strawberry cake. I'll go make some tea to go with it. Oh man, I could go for those right now, actually. Hey, uh, Pearls. It looks like she really feels bad about what happened at the detention center. <laughs> Mr. Kamaya, the tea is ready! Oh, thanks. Come on, Mr. Nick, please have some of this cake. Yeah, thanks. Uh, Pearls? Oh, excuse me, I was in the middle of cleaning the toilets. Tea and cake. Hell yeah, dude. Hey, it's okay. I just cleaned it this morning. Too late. This might be a good time for me to ask about her. I first met Pearls a year ago. It was when that murder happened at Korain Village. I still remember what she said to me when we first met. You, you're Mr. Nick, right? You're Mystic Maya Special Someone. Hey, Maya. Chat, what is your favorite kind of tea? I really like, um, mint tea. Mint tea is, uh... Also, we have one shop here that sells, uh... Like, a lot of different kinds that you, usu you usually don't see in most places here. Like, uh, uh, peach flavored tea, uh, pomegranate tea, like hot, like not, not you know, uh, the bubbly stuff or whatever. Um, and yeah, it's pretty good. Mr. T. <laughs> hey Maya, I always thought it was because she was young, but... Pearls? I think she's got the wrong idea. How about you and me? Huh? Uh, I... Uh, there's something you need to understand. What is it? It's kind of like a Korean village custom, sort of. There are hardly any men in Korean village. They really love the toilet in this game, huh? They really do, yeah. Now that you mention it, I never actually saw any men there when I visited. I'm pretty sure I told you about it a long time ago. About how spiritual powers run very strong in the Fae family. You did, and that's why you're undergoing training to be a spirit medium, right? Yeah, the thing is, only women can actually inherit the spiritual power. That's why the whole culture of Korean village kinda revolves around its women. Well, that's understandable. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, but because of that, there tends to be a lot of unsuccessful marriages. Well, men start to feel left out after a while, and then they just start leaving the village. Especially if the man has a daughter. Are you saying that Pearls' father... He's gone. He went to get milk. Boy, that's rough. Tough. Rough. Tough. Same thing. And she grew up seeing nothing but unhappy marriages all around her. That's why she's so sensitive to things like that. Pearl seems to love you a lot. Well, it's because I'm her only cousin, and, well... Because of the murder case last year, Pearlie's mother is... Oh, yeah. I remember now. Pearl's mother, Morgan Fay. Uh-oh. She's serving a prison term in isolation right now. So you see, I'm the only family Pearlie has right now. But it's the same for me, too. My mother's gone, too. So, you, so your mother's still missing. Yeah, and no one has any idea where she is. What if she went to get milk, too? Maya's mother, Misty Fay, The current master of the Korean channeling technique. She disappeared 17 years ago, after getting involved in a certain police case. But you're sure she's still alive, right? Yeah, I know she is. It's sort of a medium thing. And if your mother doesn't come back, then what? Then according to the laws of the village, I'll become the next master. Mystic Maya. The master of the Korean technique sounds like a heavy responsibility. 
Yeah, but there's no one else with the blood of the Fae main family who's a spirit medium. Well, Nick, why don't we go out and start investigating? We're not going to learn anything just by sitting in the office. Yeah, but first I want to talk to Pearls. Uh, Mr. Nick? Yeah? I acted like a baby. I doubted you, even though Mr. Kamaya trusted you completely. I guess I still have a lot of training to do. Mr. Nick! Yes! From the bottom of my heart, I apologize for what I said. Do we forgive Pearly, guys? Of course we do. Come on. I'm going out for a bit. Huh? Where are you going? I may be small, but I still have a lot of spirit channeling power. So I'm gonna show you I can be useful too by finding some evidence. Level 3 apology. <laughs> yeah. Wait, uh. She sure runs fast. Nick, let's back off and give her some room, okay? Da, 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 da. Maya! Uh-oh. Miss Andrews! I'm so sorry, it's my fault. Your precious urn! Oh, man. <laughs> I swear to god, there's so many likable characters. Um, Andrews is precious. She must be protected at all costs. Andrews, it's not your fault, it's okay. Please, calm down. What's wrong? It never ends. Everything I touch ends in failure. Maya, I'm sorry, I'll do anything to make it up to you. No, it's okay. Don't, I know I don't look it, but I'm good with my hands. I could make you another urn. Hold on, just just wait, okay? Breathe, calm down, and talk to us. Forgive me. Forgive me. Um, so when did you get the calling card from Mask? Let's see. Exactly ten days ago. I was gonna show it to the police. But that detective stopped me. Kinda sussy. So, you asked uh, Detective Atme to help with the security? Yes, in fact, it was about 20 days ago that I hired him. He seemed to know much more about uh, Mask than the police. So you hired him for the security, for security even before the calling card arrived? Well, yes, I had a premonition that something bad might happen. I've learned to trust my hunches. So that's why there are security cameras even in the basement of the warehouse? Yes, Lord Lee Taylor is very serious about the security measures. It was their way of saying, bring it on, to any potential thieves. Well, he sure brought it last night, and even left with a nice souvenir. That he did. Can you tell us a bit about the security for the treasure exhibit? It was all my fault. I never should have called the paltry little collection a treasure exhibit anyway. Why do you say that? The urn that was stolen is a pretty important object. Maybe, but its, act its actual value was, after appraisal, was, well, practically zero. Zero? I polished it I polished it until it was just about glowing. I thought maybe I could make it look more valuable. Hey yo, who's doing the react? I see you there. <laughs> but that urn contains the soul of Mr. Gami. Anyway, I left all the security arrangements to Detective Atme. Hey, I, I see that too. I see you. <laughs> Whoever's doing that. Five days ago, I began receiving all sorts of other exhibit items from Korean. Lots of people started going in and out of the warehouse down there. So maybe one of them was actually Mask in disguise. No, I personally checked out um, everyone that came through here, so that's not possible. <laughs> Knowing Adrian, she probably even checked out what they ate for breakfast that morning. Every time Leon mentions the reaction, the whole chat starts spamming the re Yeah. Top 10 favorite chat interactions. Who's doing that? Everybody does it. <laughs> Hello? Well, well. How lovely is it to see you again, my dear. What? Wait, 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 wait. What is bro cooking behind my camera? You see that? Hold on, hold on. Dude, bro thinks he's Walter White. <laughs> 
da, 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 da. Welcome to my abode. Relax and soak up the atmosphere. Uh, actually, we're kind of... Shh, silence. <laughs> Walter. Precisely as I expected. What is... Svari? The truth has once again been elegantly revealed to me. A lawyer and a spirit medium. Am I correct? Uh, I think we've already been through this. So my estimation was correct. Svari. How truly elegant. Now then, what can I do for you? Da, 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 da. You mentioned before that you were on guard duty all alone last night. Precisely, this is my fifth encounter with my arch enemy. Who would win, Saul Goodman or Phoenix Wright? I'm gonna go with Phoenix Wright. I don't know. <laughs> I refuse to allow anyone to interfere with the rightful pursuit of my prey. I heard you've been after masks since his very first theft. Yes, my dear, I see you've done your homework. In his very first heist, that vile thief pilfered the famous jewel, the Tear of Emanon. I first encountered him in the museum's sacred hall, the crime scene itself. So that's why you were hired as security for the treasure exhibit? I'm pretty sure he said that Adrian hired him. Yes, I borrowed some equipment from the Lordly Tailor and set the perfect trap. You must be in the security camera. But I thought you were watching the area yourself, too. So how did Mask manage to steal the urn? That's the million dollar question. What is the Mask's modus operandi? <laughs> Mr. Atme, did you know about the sacred urn? I'm interested only in one thing, my dear, and that is Mask. Sacred urn? <laughs> That has nothing to do with the case. But wasn't that what he stole this time? I am a hunter, sir. The urn was nothing more than a lure to catch my prey. Do you yourselves remember the shape of the individual peanuts you throw to pigeons? I don't think I like this guy's attitude, Nick. Uh... There's something that's kind of bothering me. Please, my dear, ask me anything you like. After all, we are all but seekers, wandering alone in the dark. Alone in the what? Well, I was wondering how Mask managed to steal the urn. I mean, isn't it strange that you don't seem to know? Yeah, now that you mention it, it is strange. After all, you were on guard duty that night at the scene of the crime. Unless you were sound asleep, you should have at least seen Mask. Uh-oh. Someone has a secret! What the? It's a Cyclock. Cyclock? Hey Nick, what is this Cyclock thing? Well, your Magatama lets me see when people are keeping secrets. By breaking their mental locks, I can find out what those secrets are. What? This Magatama has that kind of power? Maya, you were the one who gave me this Magatama last year. Well, it's true that this Magatama is, is a prized Fey family heirloom, but... Pearly was the one that actually imbued it with spiritual powers, right? That's why I don't really know much about what it can do. This is the woman that's gonna take over the Karain Channeling School someday? <laughs> yeah, I'm also you, okay. So how did you do it? How do you do it? How do you break the psychologue thing? While you present the Magatama. Oh boy, I think the future master still needs to learn how to be patient. Let's give it a try. Take that! Uh, Detective Apney, you were standing guard at the scene of the crime. There's no way you didn't see Mask the Mask commit the, the crime. Well now, I can hardly see why you're so positive about that. Yes, indeed, I was guarding the warehouse. That much is true. 
But I can tell you for certain that not a single person passed through that door. Oh yeah, the cycloc track is pretty good. But I'm not sure wh I'm not sure why, but this at me guy is lying through his teeth. I know, I'll show him some proof. Detective at me. I have here proof that someone went through that door last night. There was a security camera set up at the scene of the crime. It should have automatically taken a photo of anyone that went through that door. Precisely. I hope you don't mind, but we've already gotten our hands on the camera data. As you can see, the camera went off exactly once last night. What? Did you see that? But my monocle didn't catch anyone in, in its flash. It must be some kind of computer malfunction. It must be. Maybe it was your monocle that malfunctioned. What? <laughs> Are you saying that I didn't do my duty properly? Detective at me. You must have seen the thief last night. The question is, why are you trying to hide it? If he's hiding it, there must be some reason. Some reason that he desperately wants to keep hidden. And I've got just a piece of evidence that should prove it. Okay, let's suppose you didn't manage to see Mask the Mask. In that case, the reason you didn't at that time was because you were... Unconscious. I'm afraid that making a guess is not enough. Time to put your money where your mouth is. Show me your evidence. He got bonked. Detective at me. You were knocked unconscious by the thief, weren't you? Huh, surely you must be joking. You think that I look at me could be knocked unconscious so easily? The sword proves it. That's... Before the theft, the sword was in the hand of the statue of Ami Fei. Furthermore, at that time, it was not bent. There is only one explanation. You were struck on the head and knocked unconscious by the sword. Well, detective, how about it? I am impressed. You truly are an ace attorney. <laughs> oh, title drop. Oh, shit. I can't deny that there may be a small hint of truth in what you say. So you were knocked out when the thief first clobbered you? Clobber, what an ugly way of saying it, but I suppose you could put it that way. The coward struck at the precise moment that I turned to look at the computer. So you never noticed that the thief had entered the warehouse? No, the coward must have wormed his way in through somewhere besides the door. Perhaps the air ducts or the sewer pipes. Then my arch nemesis struck me on the head from behind with this gruesome item here. Ouch, Mr. Atomy should have his poor should have his poor head examined. He can say that again. How could he how could he have underestimated the thief that badly? Uh He never saw the thief, okay. The thief may not even be Mask the Mask. Just one moment, sir, lawyer. The thief was unquestionably Mask. But you never actually saw him. Perhaps so, but I installed a security camera for just a... For just such a contingency. Last night, the camera went off exactly once. Behold, this is a photo of the dastardly thief. Oh, shit. The thief can be none other than the arch criminal, Mask the Mask. Oh. God damn it. So, what do you mean by he had a very good reason? Exactly that. That Mr. Delight had a very good reason to dress up and commit those crimes. There should be a green envelope somewhere in his room. You'll need it to go. You'll need to go and investigate. But how would you know about that? Huh, have you forgotten? You're speaking to the finest ace detective ever to walk on the face of the earth! Step aside, Yagami. The most brilliant since, well, ever. Look at me. I don't know why I imagine look at me with Dr. Doof's voice from... Yeah, I... I... 
he would have like a very goofy voice. Hey, Nick, remember what uh, Detective Atme said? Exactly that. He had a good reason to dress up and commit the crimes. The green envelope. If you don't want your true identity revealed to the world, come to KB Security at 1 a.m. on October 12th and bring $50,000. 50000 This is a blackmail letter. Sure looks like a major clue, all right? Ding dong. Oh, someone's at the door. I'll be right back. Oh, thank you for coming. That's so nice of you. When I see a damsel in distress, I just can't help myself. Please, come on in. I'll make some coffee. <gasps> uh, please, make some for me too. <laughs> really? Okay, I guess I'll make myself at home, pretty lady. Wait a minute, I know that voice. Oh, Nicky boy, I'm so sorry, but I've got another guest. Oh shit. You. Larry! <laughs> Nick, it's you! And Maya, too. What a fluke. Larry! Long time no see. What, you know each other? Nicky boy? Nick, do you and this girl have, you know, something going on? Something? If you mean what I... I, under I underestimated you, Nick. A gorgeous lady like this? And Mary, too? <laughs> Way to go, dude. Larry, you... It's not like that. I knew it. Just when things can't get any worse, it's time to cue in the butts. Larry Butts. Ever since grade school, he's been... Not exactly a close friend, but yeah, we know each other. Hey man, that wasn't nice. I was your very first client. We've got quite the storied history, he and I. Ace Rizzler. <laughs> hey, come on now, you're embarrassing me. In front of this pretty little thing here. So you two are old childhood friends, I see. That's so sweet. You two go ahead and catch up on old times. I'm gonna go and check on my bike. Nice girl, that Desi. So how have you been, Nick? Too busy if you really want to know. So what have you been up to this whole time? It's been two years since I heard from you. And what's with those clothes? You look, well, weird. Hey man, that's uncalled for. This is my uniform from my part-time job. Nick, I gotta tell you. <laughs> Women, oh no. I don't trust them anymore. He got dumped again? Well, you know, Benifer. What the? Is Benifer an actual name? That feels like taking the name Jennifer and just making it a B for the memes. I followed her all the way to Japan two years ago. That's where I met the famous Catty Tom, and my whole life changed. Benifer, Catty Tom. I never heard of either of them. Anyway, dude, Caddy Tom chose Hollywood over me. Can you believe it? Well, actually... Anyway... <laughs> sounds like you had quite the adventure. Women. They're so... <laughs> oh, but you're different, Maya. You're not like the rest. I have actually... No joke, I've been put in the same situation. In, like, in reverse. Uh, if that makes sense. So, like... Uh, s someone that I... Uh, was in the same room with, basically. Was complaining about men, and I'm like, uh, yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> but then she's like, oh, but no, you're the- you're a golden boy, you're not like them. One to one. One to one. Is Amaya, like, 16? Actually, isn't she 19 in this game? Yeah. So what are you doing here, anyway? Huh? What do you mean by that? I'm just a natural-born nice guy- oh no. Larry, that's not something you say. <laughs> well, actually, I picked up uh, this while working last night. A wallet? You say you found this last night? Yeah, it had a driver's license in it, so I figured I'd just return it to myself. Hang on, let me see that for a minute. 
I knew it. Desi's picture is in here. Yeah, I guess he really digs his wife, huh? A man loving his wife? No way. Hey, Nick, it's not what you're thinking at all. No, I'm pretty sure it is. You haven't changed a bit. Uh, no way, man. I mean, she's a married woman. That's just bad news. It really is here just to check out Miss Delight. So, you said you found it at your, at your job, right? Yeah, I'm working for a private security company as a guard. Chicks just love a guy in uniform, you know? Do they? So what time was it when you found this last night? Why are you asking that? Want to see if I got an alibi? Uh, you're not the one on the hook for a crime this time, buddy. I guess it was around 1 in the morning on the first floor of our company building. What was Mr. Delight's wallet doing there? Anyway, there's nothing weird about that. After all, he works there. He works there? You mean Mr. Delight? Sure, here, take a look at this. Yo, Pianta. What's this card? It's a key card for the security company. See? It's got a serial number on it right there. There's no mistake about it. You said you were you're working part-time at a security company, right? That's right. Uh, I need to find out as much as I can about this key card. So you're sure about this key card? Yep, that's the key card we use at the building I work in. According to the serial number, this one is for the CEO's office. Uh, you need it uh, every time you use the card, it leaves a record. It leaves a record. Yeah, it tells you exactly who entered that room and when. Larry, I need that data. Whoa, slow down, man. Sorry, but that data is off limits to outsiders. If I lost this job, I'd never have a chance with Desi. It's times like these when I wish lawyers weren't so powerless. Just become a prosecutor, man. Uh... Hey, Larry, what about this? What? If you've got something to say, then say it already. <laughs> the way, he, like, his face changes is so perfect. A blackmail letter. Do you know anything about this? Well, what? I don't know anything about Alexis, and that's the truth. Alexis. Uh, what? I can't believe you do this to me. I thought you were my friend. $50,000. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Larry, you fucking... I don't have that kind of money. No, no. You don't understand. This blackmail letter was sent to Ron Delight. Whew. Man, he scared me. I almost had a heart attack, you idiot. Wait, I'm the idiot? Man, I was totally confused because it says KB Security right on the envelope. Uh, that's where I got a part-time... Oh, yeah. I think he did mention that, didn't he? Or at least it's on the uniform. KB Security. The company in the blackmail letter. You know about it? That's where I work, yeah. In fact, I'm on the job right now. So what are you doing here, then? Well, the boss is away right now, and you know what that... You know what mice do when the cat's away. Yes, yes. Anyway, how far is this company? Let me see, about 30 minutes by car, I guess? Well, if you fly down the road, anyway. Well, this apartment building is pretty close to Lordy Taylor, right? And it would take roughly an hour to go from here to KB Security and back. If Ron Delight was at KB Security when the robbery occurred, then... Whoa. Then he couldn't have stolen the urn. Hey, Nick, your phone. Hello? Is this the right residence? Pearls! Where are you? I thought I'd go to Lordly Taylor to find some more clues, but... I'm afraid I've gotten lost. Oh no. Give me that phone, Nick. Pearly, where are you- where are you right now? I was walking along and I found myself in front of that person's office. That person who? The person who doesn't act his age and always says Zuvari when he's excited? Damn. Okay, stay right there. We're coming to get you. Alright, I'm a little scared. Alright, let's go, Maya. 
Wait a second, Nick. What? That phone call just now. Oh no. No, Larry! No! No. No. <laughs> Say goodbye to Mr. Light for me, would you, Larry? Bye. Bye. I'm out of here. There she is. Mr. Nick. Mystic Maya. I never thought I'd see the two of you again. Oh, it's okay. So is Mr. Ace Detective out of the office? Yes, when I arrived here, there wasn't a single soul in sight. Say, Nick, doesn't it look like something changed since we were last here? Now that you mention it... What the hell is in this? This bag. I'm sure it wasn't here before. It looks quite full. I wonder what could be in here. Hey, Nick, open... Uh, come on, open it up. Hey, wait a minute, we can't just open his private property. Don't be such a fuddy-duddy, this is an important investigation. That's true. And truth be told, I have to admit I'm kinda curious. Well, what's in there? Hang on a sec, I'm taking it out right now. Whatever it is, it feels kinda hard and smooth. Well, hello there! Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> what are you doing, Sir Lawyer? I'm shocked to see a servant of the court ignoring the law so flagrantly. I'm really sorry. Maya made me do it. <laughs> Nick, I can't believe you. A gentleman never uses a lady as an excuse for his own poor behavior. The real question is, can you afford to waste time lollygagging about here? What do you mean by that? Perhaps I should make myself more clear. Tomorrow's trial... Svari. Shall we say the figurative Sir William will be dropping his panties... Before lunch time? What the fuck is this guy saying? Wow, Nick. Sounds sounds like it's gonna be really exciting. It sure will be, I guess. Uh, what's going to happen to the trial tomorrow? That's so dramatic. Do you know what your biggest mistake so far has been, Sir Lawyer? It was becoming a lawyer in the first place. That certainly doesn't does sound like a big mistake, Mr. Nick. That's actually kind of what we've been saying. He doesn't get paid enough. Tomorrow will be a day to remember. I, look at me, will take the stand. And then, Svari, my testimony will prove to be the undoing of the lot of you. Yes, all of you. I will unmask you as the thief's co-conspirators. Conspirators? Uh-oh. You're quick on the defensive, I see. However, it is not I that is your greatest enemy. There is a far more dangerous threat that you will face during the trial. What are you talking about? Sir Lawyer, if you truly are who you say, I'm sure you've heard of him. His name is Goro. Goro? You have taken a step down the path of foolishness. That's something Francisco would say. To try to defend a career criminal who deserves nothing less than the death penalty. Hey! Last time I checked, no one knows for sure that Mr. Delight really is the mask. My dear lady, times may change, but people, sadly, do not. Well, you will understand this when you are more mature. Uh, who is this Godo person? It's not surprising that a spirit medium has not heard the name. Godo, the prosecutor whose equal cannot be found in this country, but in heaven. Godo, a legend or myth, men pin a lifetime of hopes on the chance to simply meet him. Simply. Prosecutor Godo. But the best prosecutor in the country isn't Godo, it's Mr. Edgeworth. Isn't that right, Nick? It's no surprise that a spirit medium such as yourself would know nothing of this. But Ace Prosecutor Miles Edgeworth is currently traveling abroad. Huh? In fact, it was Mr. Edgeworth who acknowledged Godo as the best in the country. And you agree with that? Most certainly. In fact, you could call him the Luke at me <laughs> of the prosecutor's office. Okay, buddy, you might wanna, you might wanna tune it, tone it down with the self, uh, you know. Well, that's good to hear. The prosecution has a fighting chance tomorrow. Mr. Nick, is this Godo really that strong? Uh, I seem to remember hearing about someone like that. 
Not surprising, some people spend their entire lives idly waiting for his appearance. It looks like we're done investigating for the day. Sir Liar. The stage has been set and all pieces are finally in place. All that remains now is for the dance to begin. A new prosecutor, an ace detective, and a thief. This will be one tough trial. To be continued. Okay, guys, I know I'm about to spew some cringe, okay? But I'm actually thinking of calling it here. Um, up until now, I've been really trying to, like, you know, do the cases clean. Like, for example, one stream will finish at least one whole case. Or two whole cases. But I'm kind of feeling tired today, like, surprisingly. Um, so I figured it might be best to just call it instead of pushing myself. Uh, but we'll continue this in a day or two. So, you know, if you're interested in hanging out more um, and seeing more of the story, if you haven't already, then, you know, feel free to stop by again when the time uh, comes, which should be very soon. So, yeah, uh, until then, you guys, thank you so much for joining. I hope you had fun watching the third uh, game so far. Uh, there's a lot of really good moments uh coming so look forward to those but yeah no ichiban don't worry guys on the bright side this means that the next time we start the start of that stream is gonna have ichiban so look forward to it anyway you guys take care stay safe stay hydrated all the good stuff have a good sleep if you're sleeping i don't know if you're gonna sleep but yeah uh and yeah i'll see you next time bye bye now bye 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 bye